Welcome now to A's TV. Happy Family Day coming here from Athlete Institute in Orangeville. Today, your Orangeville A's will take on the Niagara River Lions. They're close right now, Ryan, in records. The Orangeville A's sitting at 7-10, and 10, the Niagara River Lions at 6-11. and 11. It's going to be a very competitive game. Make no mistake about it, both teams trying to climb out of the basement right now of their respective Central Conference. Uh, once again, both teams uh, coming off back-to-backs. Niagara River Lions having a successful trip down to Windsor, taking care of business there. Orangeville A's against the defending champs, not so much today, unfortunately. The good thing about this, though, is Niagara did play yesterday, as did the Orangeville A's and the day before, but Niagara actually had a three-game losing streak before they got that win yesterday. The Orangeville A's now on a four-game losing streak, really desperate and hungry to come out and to get that W. Well, oh, absolutely, and when you think of the fact that they were right there with the defending champs for the entire game from start to finish, any time that there was an issue there, uh, any time really specifically that there was an issue uh, or, or a specific drop-off for the Orangeville A's, they managed to make a comeback and managed to keep it close with the Halifax Hurricanes, but Halifax showing just how much of a championship team they really are taking care of business. The fun thing about yesterday is, you're right, they only lost by seven points to the defending national champs, and they didn't have some of their biggest players for them. They didn't have really, uh, didn't have Justin Moss in the lineup. They also didn't have Anthony Harris. Uh, Anthony Harris has been out for a couple games now. Justin Moss is questionable for today, but they have Relier Jefferson out now. Uh, one of their top scorers isn't going to play again today, so I mean, they could have three of their starters out again to play this Niagara team. And as unfortunate as it is, it's really a testament though to the, the, the team building that took place in the offseason here for the Orange Villays because they have so many capable players that are willing and able to fill those roles like a Slim McGee, like a Enrique Rico Di Loretto, like an Alex Johnson, all of these players have stepped up to the challenge when their number has been called, and it's been a very impressive season for them so far in a year where I don't think that they were expecting to get the minutes that they've gotten, but you've always got to be ready, and these guys have shown up. Alex Johnson, speaking of that point guard who stepped up yesterday, ended the game with 13 and 9. We're going to have a chance to talk to him a little bit later in this pregame and see what he's going to need to do to step up in that leadership role. Yes, absolutely. Alex Johnson here of the Orange Relays. Alex, you ended the game yesterday with 13 and 9. Now, another guy might be out on your team again, so your bench keeps getting smaller and smaller. Justin Moss still questionable for today. Who's going to need to step up for you guys? I mean, basically everybody. You know, next man up mentality. Um, I know a lot of people feel as though, you know, they're deserve, they, they, they deserve things, but this is a chance to prove it. I mean, a lot of the bench guys haven't been given that type of role, so this is a time where they can step up and show coach, hey, I can play too. Fair enough, and now your team is in need of leadership today after a four-game losing streak. You're the point guard. That makes you the QB of the team. What are you going to need to do to get that W today? I uh, just do a better job of communicating with guys offensively and defensively. Um, I know when I first came in, I was very active, very very talkative, so just need to get back to that. Fair enough, and now, Alex, it's family day today. Happy family day. Anything you want to say to your fam watching at home? I love you. Good. Good luck. <laughs>
So, Kelsey, that's straight from the horse's mouth. Alex Johnson saying he needs to be a little bit more active, be more of a point guard that he uh, says he's gotten away from that a little bit, uh, the lack of communication on the court. So, you know, what are, your, what are your, some of your thoughts when you hear something like that coming from Alex? I mean, Alex still had almost a double-double yesterday. Again, we talked about that 13-9 twice. We've said that in this pregame. 13-9 is not a bad night for him, but he's so hard on himself because I guess that, double, that loss yesterday really kind of nailed it into this team that they're not going to get away with kind of the small mistakes that keep adding up, adding up, adding up throughout the game. And it really showed in that fourth quarter. They got so close, but it was it was every small mistake that really added up that Halifax wasn't making. And now they're going against, like you said, Ryan, a Niagara team that's sitting in last place right now, but their record doesn't do them justice, having more than half their games against the best team here in the Central Division. So, I mean, going against a team they can't take lightly. And yes, Logan Stutz is out. Yes, Mike Allison is out for now. They still have guys who can come to play. Chris Commons, the Orange Relays had big problems with him last year. They've got Richard Amarty, who was on this team last year, who is going to know, you know, how these guys play. He's going to know the gym. He's going to feel comfortable here when he gets hot from beyond the arc he can be hot from beyond the arc they've also got a new pickup in antonio jardine you know him as scoop jardine of course from syracuse uh, yep. he's a huge pickup for this team and the orange Relays haven't seen him yet this year and, and really when you add in the factor as well that this is a team that just came off of a win on the road they're looking to do it one more time today here in orangeville i mean this is a very motivated team that knows they're a lot better than what their record shows and uh, if orangeville isn't careful they're going to find out the hard way tonight Orangeville right now in the league, they're allowing 105 points per game. Niagara allowing 107. So both teams really need to knuckle down on defense right now. The Orangeville A's on the other end, they're averaging 102 points per game, where Niagara only averaging 96. And, and really, when you add in the fact that this is a team that it's one of the few teams in the league that's averaging under 100 points, and most importantly, and I think this might actually turn out to be the X factor in the game, is Orangeville has a number of very talented shooters ready to go in this game, whether it's Enrico Di Loretta, whether it's Rick Bodiford, Jamison Tipping, uh, even Alex Johnson at time has shown even he can Nastich light it up. Nastich got a Nast few off yesterday. Nastich was able, he was, he's comfortable taking that shot. And they're going up against the worst defensive three-point shooting team in the league. This is a team that allows their opponents to shoot at least 37% from the field, from specifically behind the three-point line. And when you add in that factor, also adding in the fact that this is a team that the Orange Villets outscored the Niagara River Lions 60 to 38 in their last meeting in the paint. So if they can continue to work that inside out game, they could walk away with a rather easy victory here, but of course nothing comes easy. And with all of that being said, I mean, it's gonna be a very, very enter entertaining game to see because of the roster changes you spoke about, but also just because despite the fact that there's so many new faces, Yes, exactly. When, when you see so many new faces, especially Alex Johnson getting the minutes that he's gotten now, you're going to have opportunities here to kind of see the same type of style of game being played despite the new faces. The other thing that I want to bring up quickly, you mentioned the uh, the defensive three-point percentage that this team allows. On the other end, the foul shooting. Orangeville is one of the best foul shooters in the league. They're at second right now, or fourth, uh, second. Um, they are. And yep. Niagara is the last, only shooting 67% from the line. And I mean, this is so cliche to say, but foul shots win games. It, it's so true. And when you add in the fact as well that this is a team that also kind of hesitates at attacking the paint, it's only going to add into more issues. Another player that you just saw go across kind of the front of your screen there was Tyshawn Patterson. Tyshawn Patterson is a tough guard that has really given it to the Orange Relays last season at least. He wasn't too big of a matchup um, in the previous games this year, but last season he's a handful, especially in this gym. He feels comfortable here. And really when you add in the factor as well that there will be no Relier Hollis Jefferson in the game today, it, it, it's, it's a huge miss for the Orange Relays, is it, isn't it, Kelsey? Of course. I mean, Jefferson is their top scorer right now. Uh, he's fourth right now in the league in scoring with 21.06 points per game and in steals with uh, 2.35. So that is a huge, huge load that the Orange Relays aren't going to have today. Very active hands. Very On top of hands. not having Justin Moss potentially. All right, guys, we are 10 seconds away from tip-off. Make sure you stay tuned. We'll get to the starting lineups, and then it's action. Here we go.
Now to A's TV. If you're just tuning in now, Kelsey Wright, Brian Greco bringing you the Orangeville A's taking on the Niagara River Lions. Take a look here. It is Niagara and Orangeville fighting now for that uh, almost bottom st spot. They're the bottom <laughs> spot in the Central Division. They are claiming the third and fourth bottom spot overall in the NBL with seven and ten and six and eleven. I mean. Once again, four game losing streaks. When you go on any kind of streak like that in the regular season, you're gonna lose footing, footing excuse me, in this league, especially when it's so tightly compact. It's really turning into a two horse race so far in the league with Halifax Hurricanes and London Lightning duking it out at the top there. But there's no reason that Orangeville cannot get on that hot streak going into the playoffs and uh, making some noise of their own. We talked about the Orangeville A's losing streak, but on the other end of the floor in the blue jerseys, the Niagara River Lions went on their own little losing streak as well. They lost to, uh, Orangeville, London, London, and then eventually beat Windsor just yesterday. So, I mean, they just broke their losing streak. Orangeville now looking to break their losing streak here at home. Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, you know, not to beat a dead horse, but um, when you've spent half your season facing the defending Central Conference champs, I mean, that's going to be a tough matchup for you every single time. They've literally had the toughest schedule in the NBL this season, and uh, it almost seems like a... Uh, a bit of a relief that uh, they're only facing London one more time this season. But of course, today they've got a test in themselves in the Orangeville A's, a team that is putting out a lineup today, Kelsey, that can shoot the rock. And if there's one thing Niagara has trouble defending, it's, shooting, it's defending those, those shooters in the corners. Starting for the Orangeville A's is Stefan Nastich, Rick Boniford, Alex Johnson. For the first time, Daniel Tulloch is making his way on, as well as Jake Anderson for the Niagara River Lions. Rich Amarty making a start here, something he's used to doing. He played for the Orange Villains last year. Sammy Zaglinski, as well as Marcus Lewis, Chris Commons, and Sam Muldrow. As always with tradition, Kelsey, the fans are standing, and they will not sit until they get the very first basket of the game, as is per tradition here in Orangeville. Everybody is up on their feet. Muldrow and Nastich now. Even Although, the Riverlines fans, sorry, Kelsey. Yeah, look at mention. them. They're getting into it. 
I'm sure they'll sit the first time the River Lions score. We'll see if they'll just be kind of peer pressured into sitting down afterwards. <laughs> the first possession here is going to go Orangeville. That's Alex Johnson at the top wearing number five. Looking to get something started off, he gets it over to Bodiford and into Nastich, but that one goes right out of bounds. A turnover for the first possession. It's Niagara ball on the baseline. Unfortunately, not the start that the Orange Villets wanted, especially establishing that inside move. As said before, the Orange Villets outscoring the River Lions last time. They faced 60 to 38 in the paint. And when you've got a true seventh footer and Stefan Nastich down there now, you want to try and exploit that as much as possible. Except Moss and Jefferson are now out. Those guys are big scoring in the paint for this team. Absolutely. Here's Chris Compens now. He goes up and under. He's going to get the foul. A great start for this Niagara River Lions team. He'll go to the line now for two. Compens showing off that post game a little bit there, Kelsey. A guy who are actually more known for spot-up jump shooting and a couple of crossovers here and there, but showed he can get down and dirty with Daniel Tulloch in the uh, post there if he needs to. Comments has been playing pro since 2011, and he's been with the Windsor Express now for four seasons, including two championships. He's a winner. He's a winner. This is a guy that we've seen even last, anytime we've ever seen him here in Orangeville, no matter what team he's playing for, he's always got that clutch factor in him, it seems to be. Last season, he averaged 18.28 points per game, Ryan. One of the top in the entire league. Here's Bodiford now on the other end, gets it over to Johnson. Johnson drives a pullback from the high school three. That one is good for the first two points. It's now tied up, and the River Lions take a seat. <laughs> How about that? Alex Johnson, though, making good on his promises pregame, saying he wants to get his teammates a little bit more involved, but also take more of a leadership role. He saw that his offense wasn't running the way that he had hoped. So what does he do? He steps up and he does it himself. Muldrow, the big man, for three on the outside. Niagara now at five. Showing off that range there. Something you're going to see a lot in the NBL. Big steal here for Niagara River Lions. Here's Sammy Ziglinski. He's fourth right now in assists. He's got it back up top. Looks to spot up. Gets it out to Amarty. Amarty drives baseline. A step back floater. Another two is good. Once again, Niagara off and running in the beginning here. Bodiford spots up from that same spot. Alex Johnson just had success with. That's another two now. Back and forth, these teams will go. And I'm pretty sure Ryan is going to be like that all game. Absolutely. And, uh, you can imagine Bodiford is extremely, uh, he's extremely happy getting that first shot off after such a poor shooting performance yesterday against Halifax. Telek is going to get called with that foul. A little bit of a hooking of his arm there with Chris Commons. They got kind of battled together there. And Justin Moss, just as I say it, is making his way onto the floor. So he's had a, a couple injuries, actually. He's got maybe turf toe. He's got a cut in his head. So he's making his way back on. Knows that his team needs him today. And that's going to be a great piece to have for this Orange Villiers team. That's an absolutely uh, fantastic pickup and news here for the Orange Villiers, and especially for fans here. Make a, Moss making that surprise appearance. And he put his hair back in his pigtails. I love them like that. <laughs> Sometimes you need to go back to get a fresh start. <laughs> Here's Amarty now going against Bodiford. Amarty looks to turn the corner. He's got a couple inches there. Bodiford going to be called with a foul. Amarty goes to the line now for and two. Funny, Rick Bodiford and Richard Amarty were actually spending a considerable amount of time uh, talking to each other pre-game here. And, uh, they were, they were even going over a few things you could tell. Like, you know, of course, I don't read minds or lips, but you can tell they were definitely talking uh, basketball. And uh, it seemed right there that uh, Amarty got the better of them. Amarty nails the first one. Again, he's from Scarborough, so he's got some family members here watching himself. He went to Oregon where he averaged 6.44 points a game and now played two seasons with the Orange Relays before moving over to Niagara. Here's Johnson now. Over to Anderson. Anderson gets it to the corner to Bodiford. Bodiford does what he does best. How many times does he get those fouls to fall from beyond the three? He's going to go to the line now for three shots from the charity stripe. I don't know why people don't like Rick, Rick Bodiford so much. They, they always just want to attack him every time he Tackle goes up. Tackle him from yeah, the Yeah, every time he gets tackled, every time he's going up for a three in the corner. I don't know. Is it something he's saying to the guys on the floor? Or? It must be. It must be. Bodiford here, if you're new to watching this game, has been with the Orange Relays with the Brampton A's since the beginning of the entire organization started. So he's extremely comfortable here in this Athlete Institute gym as he shoots his second foul shot, nails it. He's got one more still from the line. 
Bodiford, once again, you can see he was in here a little bit earlier doing all the little extra work that he needed. And the referee here thought that Richard Amarty was a substitution because he was right in front of our commentary desk here tying his shoes, but... He was still inbounds. Yeah, not just that, but he was a starting player. <laughs> Justin Moss getting his presence known right from the beginning. Grabs that ball before it goes out of bounds. Gets it right off of the leg of Chris Commons. It's going to be Orange football now on the sideline. I like this matchup down low here with Moss and Nastich looking for each other. There's a play and go. There's Nastich now. Muldrow is going to get called with that foul as Nastich again. Goes to the line 4-2. And this is the kind of game that the Orange Relays are going to want because they're so great at shooting the foul shot. And the Niagara River Lions, not so much. Absolutely. Nastich now at the line. The Stanford grad will have two shots. Just over nine and a half minutes left to go in this first quarter. The Niagara River Lions shooting the lights out so far, leading the way nine to five over the Orange Villets. Stefan Nastich here, ready to take a second shot. It's amazing right now, looking at the stats for the Niagara River Lions. 100% from the field goal, 100% from the three, 100% from the free throw. <laughs> and there's only one rebound so far in this game, and it's an offensive board. <laughs> Great steal there by Justin Moss. Gets it over to Nastich. Nastich goes up, and that foul will go to Lewis. Stefan Nastich being nasty. Big Nasty getting it done there in the paint. He's going to go to the line again for another two. And that's going to be the key here. A lot of, a lot of kick and drive going on here for the Orange Villets. It's so great to have Justin Moss back. He got that steal. Played like a point guard going up. The hugest point guard in this, hugest, biggest point guard in this <laughs> league. As he goes up, dishes it over to Nasty as he gets it to fall. He misses his first foul shot here, but he still have a chance to bring it within, within one, excuse me, with just over nine minutes. Yep. And, and of course, Nastich, no, no slouch either when it comes to doing certain guard positions. You look at his form. I mean, very few seven-footers at this level have such a form that Nastich has. It's, it's very refreshing to see a guy that can be able to step it out and knock it down like that. Looks like there's going to be an offensive foul there on number 15, Sam Muldrow, fighting for position with Nastich down low. And now it's going to be Orangeville ball on the baseline. As a substitution is made, Muldrow will make his way out of the game and in for the Niagara River Lions is Carl Hall. Carl Hall loses a couple inches from Muldrow, but he does come with some size of his own. It's going to be a big body for Nastich to work against. Absolutely. Here's Johnson, drives left, pulls up. Gets the defender out of the way, just short though. Gets his own offensive rebound. A big block there by Hall. Alex Johnson trying to do just a little bit too much there. He had Nastich on the wing there for a quick pass, but great defense here by Orangeville. It's in the hands of Justin Moss for the slam. The fans love Justin Moss to begin with, and with action like that coming into the game, this is why the Orangeville fans love Justin Moss. Welcome Amarty. back, Justin yeah. Moss. But there's Richard Amarty. Saying, not so fast, big man. Richard Marty just saying, hey guys, I remember this one too. Here's Justin Look at Moss. that slam, my goodness. <laughs> With authority, and he's just looking around, just, get, just giving the mean mug. Mean mug to the wall there. Here's Justin Moss once again going down the middle. It's going to be an offensive foul on Moss. Great defense there by Niagara. And you look at Justin Moss. If there's one thing about Justin Moss, very rarely will you ever see any frustration coming out of him. He knew, he's the kind of guy that he doesn't necessarily like to work the refs over as something if he knew he was wrong in the situation. In that situation, he knew the defender had his feet set, falls down, looks up at the ref and just goes, okay, gets when Moss, back up. When Moss argues a call, you know that yeah, he's, you know he's, got a, he's probably got a case. <laughs> Here's Zaglinski now, gets it into Amarty. Amarty going against former teammate for two seasons, Rick Bodiford, looking to turn the corner. He steps back, chucks it up. It's just short. Anderson rebounds. There's that great defense. Amarty kind of giving the Bodiford a bit of a shove there to try and create space. Only problem is couldn't get his hand back quick enough to get a proper shot off. Here's Moss now. Over to Johnson. Johnson slings it from beyond the three. That one just long. Now coming back the other way is Zaglinski. You could tell Johnson there was kind of fading a little bit to the left as he took that shot. Zaglinski, nice take there. Zaglinski is fourth right now in the league in assists, but he can put some buckets in for himself. You can see there makes it look easy with a little finger roll down the middle. Johnson finds a wide open Moss. 
Moss gets his own rebound, puts it up with just one hand. One of the best, some of the best hands in the league you're gonna see right there in Justin Moss, a guy who actually technically this year should be a senior in the NCAA, but instead he's here in the pros putting in work. Zaglinski does it again, back to back for the point guard of Niagara. Here's Johnson now, turns the corner, shuts one up, no good, Chris Commons. Loses the ball, great way to stay with it with Alex Johnson, stays right with it, knocks it off of Chris Commons' body, and it's gonna be out of bounds, Orangeville ball, as a couple of substitutions come into the game. Slim McGee and Jamison Tipping in for the Orangeville A's, and it's Kirk Williams Jr. in for Niagara River Lions. How important is it to have just a mass Moss, excuse me, back in this lineup here, Kelsey, when you can see now you can work the minutes between McGee and Nastich and Moss. You don't necessarily have to play your bigs all the time now. Moss brings a nice kind of veteran energy as well, which is really nice. And here's Jake Anderson going up a big block by Marcus Lewis. And, and Ziglinski grabs the ball back for the Niagara. Great D there by McGee. Here's Moss once again going up for it. Nothing too fancy this time. Gets the bucket and they tie it now. 16 to 16. It's a great effort there by Moss. Moss, can you tell he's back? Here's Kirk Williams Jr. Over to Chris Commons. Commons loses his dribble. Here's Jake Anderson. He goes up, can't get him to fall, but he'll have a chance now at the foul line for two more. And we're right next to the Niagara River Lions bench here. They did not like that call whatsoever. He felt that Anderson was the one initiating all of the contact, going to the rim, and Zaglinski just happened to be there with his hands up. Zaglinski looks like he made a taken one in the face yesterday. He's got kind of a black eye. It looks like he's wearing all this nice purple eyeshadow. I gotta, <laughs> I, you, of course, you can't see that in the in the what you guys are watching at home. On the but broadcast. I'm yes. nice and close right now, and it's actually kind of a nice shade of purple. Are you gonna ask him for uh, tips after? <laughs> Jake Anderson nails the first one, 16-15. Jake Anderson. There's another talented player here out of Iowa State, 6'2", 200 pounds. He's been another guy, though, for the Orange Valets that have relied on a lot in this season so far with Anthony Harris out with Alex Johnson really being the only true point guard left on the roster. They've been looking at Jake Anderson to be that, that scoring threat whenever either Tipping or Modiford have had to run the point. Here's Hall now up top. Kicks it out to Chris Commons. Commons can't connect. Here's Rick Modiford now going 800 miles a minute. Gets it out to the shooter who had some hot streaks yesterday. Jamison tipping just long on that one. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit too wide open there. We see it every every game, Kelsey. Someone's just a little too wide open. Zaglinski from Brampton. A deep one for number three. Zaglinski, don't be shocked. He's gonna make that, he's gonna take that shot consistently. Some of the deepest range we've seen in this league as Bonnebird answers. What a back and forth battle we have here, Kelsey. Still five minutes to go in the first quarter. And we've already, let's take another look at that right now. Ziglinski gets another one off this time. It's just short. Rick Bodiford, very talented there. Great spot up shot, catching it, catch and shoot. Jake Anderson finding Tipping once again up top. Tipping out to Bodiford. He releases. There we go. Bodiford is back in it after a night yesterday that we just like to see Rick Bodiford have. He doesn't have those kind of slow nights. Now, in the first quarter, already slinging back the threes. Rick Bodiford had a chance to speak with him before the game. We just talked a little bit about how Halifax was really pressuring him, and he always felt like his shots were coming off extremely well. During that game, he just couldn't get any of them to fall. And he even promised me, he said, Ryan, it's gonna be it's gonna be a whole different story today. And so far, he's proven it. Chris Commons goes up, that one no good. A great rebound there by Slim McGee and uh, Bodiford there to clean it up. Jamison tipping now, over to Anderson. Uh, just rattles out there as we head into the four minute mark of the first quarter. Chris Commons, another big block by Slim McGee, proving his worth on this Orangeville team so far as Moss on the other end with the reverse for two. What a way Anderson to thread the needle there. Absolutely incredible play right up and under Justin Moss. Keep in mind, that's a power forward, 6'8", 245, that's grabbing it and going up and under the rim. 
And, and don't tell me that Justin Moss can't play a small forward or a shooting guard if he really, really wanted to. <laughs> All right, guys, at just under the four-minute mark of this first quarter, leading the way for Orangeville is Rick Bonneford with nine points, Sammy Zaglinski with seven for Niagara, and the rebounding leaders both at two, Paul and Anderson. One thing we're starting to notice here, Kelsey, though, is the shots that Orangeville is getting, even though they're not necessarily hitting them, very few are contested behind the arc. And this really kind of plays into what Niagara really is. And that's a team that has had difficulty defending the three, as we said before the game. So it'll be interesting to see if they can make any adjustments to try and keep on. But keep in mind as well that a lot of their a lot of their their, their backcourt is not necessarily as big and as long as Halifax was. So when you can't get across the court as quickly as Orangeville is moving the ball, a lot of guys are going to get their open looks. And even though they're only shooting 40% right now, that stack could go up in a hurry if Orangeville gets enough open looks. Well said, Ryan. Another stat to look at quickly is the rebounding. The Niagara River Lions are down by six right now, and they only have five rebounds on the game. The Orangeville A's are sitting at 10, and that really translates to, translates, excuse me, to second chance points. Uh, Orangeville A have four, so they're leading by five. They have four second chance points. Niagara sitting at zero still. And also, an another fact to build off of that, Kelsey, points off of the turnover. How many fast break points have these guys been able to either convert or have ended up uh, going to the line for two? continue to do that and you're catching your opponent on, on their back of their heels, it's going to give you an opportunity to build a lead as they have so far in this first quarter. Excellent move there. Knew exactly what he wanted to do when he got the ball. Made his gave him the little shimmy shake up and over. DiLoretto makes his way onto the floor now for the Orange Rays. Great second effort there by Rick Bodiford on the rebound. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, you can tell Bodiford's a man on a mission right now. He knew that he, in a way, he felt like he had let his team down yesterday. If he had made just a couple of those extra shots, who knows what they would have been able to do against Halifax. And he's showing it so far in this game. He's not giving up anything. Kirk Williams Jr., same pass into Hall. This time, Justin Moss able to swipe it out, just strip him of the ball in the paint. Here's McGee now. His defender, hand down, man now. It's good for two. Slam McGee, Slim McGee. He was practicing that Next shot. He dunks, can we call him Slam McGee? Slam McGee, yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely look at that after. Hall now with the ball underneath, kicks it out. It's back in the hands of Hall now. He's looking to go up against Justin Moss. From the corner now, Amarty goes up. A big foul by Jamison Tipping. Amarty will go to the line now for two. Amarty with that pump fake. Got his defender right off of his feet. Great decision on his part to dribble, uh, drive baseline, and go up for this one. And you know, he's rewarded now with two shots from the line. The uh, Niagara River Lions shooting 100% right now from the free throw line. Once again, it keeps them in close. Also gives his uh, teammates a chance to catch their breath in a game that has been very fast-paced so far. You know, it really, it's like you're watching on the broadcast, Kelsey, but it really doesn't do you any justice unless you're like sitting right here watching the speed at which some of these guys are moving. Because you don't even take in just how big they are. I mean, Richard Amarty alone, there's a guy who's standing at six foot nine. You wouldn't guess that when you're seeing it on the broadcast, but to see him just flying by up and down the floor here, you see how much energy these guys are expending. Justin Moss right into the hands of Amarty. Amarty with the jam, gets the crowd going. There's an Amarty party sign out there in the stands. <laughs> Gotta love that one as he throws it down for two. He's definitely becoming a fan favorite out there in uh, Niagara. A what big a three there. by Jamison Tipping. We re-showed you the big dunk by Amarty, and you missed a huge three there by Jamison Tipping. It's now 29 to 24 as Kirk Williams Jr. puts another two off the glass. Kirk Williams, he had a rather quiet night against Windsor, only putting up seven points, but this is a guy who averages 16 a game, so look for him to be a factor moving forward. McGee, just short. Kirk Williams Jr., an all-star so far in this first as Tyshawn Patterson puts another two in. It's a one-point game here now at Athlete Institute. I've always had a chance. I've watched Kirk Williams play for a number of years now in the league. And I've just, I've just referred to him now as the instigator. He, he is that guy that is always talking, always chatting up, getting under the skin of the opponents. And on top of that, he can ball. He's incredibly intelligent with and without the basketball. 
He's been in the state since 2012 with the Mississauga Power uh, and with the Windsor Express. Back to the Mississauga Power now again with the Windsor Express for the last two years. Yep, and once again, they're a huge, huge block there by Carl Hall, the Canadian playing out of Wichita State. Big rejection there. Let's take a look at this. Justin Moss trying to take him on the spin move. But Hall, get that out of here. No thanks. I think I actually heard that come from the bench. They said, get that out of here. <laughs> There's going to be a foul here on the Niagara River Lions. That one goes to number 14 on Niagara. That's uh, Scoop Jardine, the Syracuse grad, as De Loretto, the Windsor grad, goes to the line for two. Kelsey, tell me a little bit about Scoop Jardine because he seems to be someone that you know a few things about. Sure, he actually has a really cool story. He went to Syracuse in his last year. He averaged 12.2 uh, points per game, 5.9 assists, and he only had two years of eligibility after being injured. And you know what? Here's the thing, Ryan. Um, the most successful season for Syracuse, Jardine and his teammate Chris Joseph were the senior leaders for that team. Uh, they led Syracuse to the number one spot for six weeks in December and January. Jardine's numbers dropped a little bit in his last year to 8.9 points a game, but still led the Orange to the Big East regular season title. Uh, obviously, in the final four, they fell to Ohio State 77 to 70. Finished his career at Syracuse with nine points, 4.4 assists. Very impressive player. Trying to make his mark here in the NBL as well. Here's Kirk William Jr. He gets it out to Lewis. Lewis a little bit off. Tulloch able to get his hand on it, sling it back over there to Nastic. And now it's going the other way. Here's DiLoretto up off the glass. Nastich with the rebound goes up. There's going to be another foul. Hall is called for that foul. The Niagara coach not happy with that one, Ryan. Not at all, but you know what? I absolutely love it when, when shooters can show that they're more than just shooters. And Enrico Di Loretto, how many times have we seen him get guys off their feet, attack the basket, go up and in? And of course, there's Stefan Nastich right out of Stanford, just jumping right in there and able to keep keeps the hands high. The most important thing about that rebound, keeps the hands high when he gets it down and tries to put it right back up right away. And because of that, he ends up going to the line for two. Because when you get your hands up like that as a seven footer, all they're gonna be grabbing is wrist. Nastic has three points all from the foul line so far, Ryan. There's a foul there on Stefan Nastic. It's his first of the game. Nastic. They don't call him nasty for nothing there. And he works those screens extremely well with Alex Johnson, though. Very very mobile big man. One more foul by the Orange Relays, and both teams will be bonus for this last minute of play in the quarter. Here's Jardine. We just talked about how great he was at Syracuse, and he is doing the exact same thing here with the Niagara River Lions. He puts two more in. It's a one-point game. Jardine showing off that athleticism there with the right hand. Here's Nastic up top, gets it over to Johnson. Johnson. A nice little pump fake, gets it right back to Nastic, who puts it in for the floater right down the middle. What a beautiful two-man game that was there between Johnson and Nastic, getting their defenders off their feet every single pump fake. Excellent move to the basket there by both men, and an even better finish by Nastic. There's about a four-second difference now, Ryan, between the game clock and the shot clock. Niagara River Lions are going to look to take up the entire next seven seconds in their shot clock. Here's Jardine. Same move, kicks it out though. It's in the hands of Patterson. He chucks it up. Tyshawn Patterson gets nothing. Here's Jamison tipping now with one second from the three. Just <laughs> short. He's mad at himself for that one again. Just a little bit too much time. I wouldn't feel too bad if I was tipping because he kind of got away with what looked like either a carry or a travel there or a yep. double dribble. Take your pick. <laughs> All right, guys, now to end the first quarter. The field goal percentage for these two teams, pretty similar. Orange Hill actually shooting worse than the Niagara River Lions at 47%, Niagara at 57%. It's the free throw shooting that's doing it right now, keeping Niagara in the game. They're shooting 83% from the line. Again, they average only 67% over the season, so having a great shooting percentage night to night. Um, and the Orange Hill A's only shooting 61%, Ryan. They're second right now in the league in foul shot percentage, but not tonight. No, not at all. And really, when you add in the fact, though, that this is, uh, they have, they actually have been necessarily pushing to get to the line as consistently as they have. They got double the trips that uh, the Niagara River Lions do have. But when you add in the fact, though, that they've just been able to get very good, consistent fast break points, and they're just playing solid basketball right now. Uh, but once again, Niagara not going away. It's only a three-point deficit. Only a three-point deficit, and again, we talked about the rebounds before. They only have 10 rebounds in that first quarter. Orangeville A's have 15. Second chance points are at two and six. The Orangeville A's leading the way with six points. And the bench scoring, that's the big one. The Orangeville A's have 14 points. 
Uh, Niagara only has eight off the bench, but I mean, when Justin Moss doesn't start, I'm putting this in quotations, he's a bench player, and I mean, he's coming in now. Keep an eye on that coach, he's going nuts. He's gonna, he's gonna dominate the bench scoring, really. He's, the Orange Valets are gonna have most of the bench scoring. He's got game. eight points right now, so his eight points off the bench for Orangeville's 14, that's a big, big statement for them, and he's getting those in the paint points, too. There's 10 of those. Uh, Niagara River Lions winning that battle with 14. Absolutely, well said. Try to get shots in that coach, because he's gonna go now. Right now, heading into the second quarter, uh, leading the way in scoring for the Orangeville A's is Rick Bonneford with nine points. A great start for the veteran A on this team. And Amarty on the other team for Niagara. He's got 10 points right now, leading his team. And again, showing how comfortable he is right in this gym he played here for the last two years. Absolutely. Yeah, like when there's the free throws, um, he wants like a very tight shot, like head to his ear. going to be Niagara River Lions ball coming in to start this second quarter. Kirk Williams Jr. will take it out, try and get it into Jardine. Here's Scoop Jardine now. I like that nickname. I'm not calling him by his first name anymore. There you go, Scoop. Scoop. A wide a open haul underneath, able to sink it in for two points now. Niagara right Ooh, there with a one the point A's. Game. Yeah, one point game. 33 to 32 now. Orangeville is leading the way. Just to kick off this second quarter, here's Alex Superman Johnson. DiLoretto right back to Johnson. He turns the corner, spots up for the three. It rattles out. That one should at least be worth half a point. <laughs> it was halfway in, so half a point, right? That's the way I see it. Here's Scoop Jardine up top now. Over to Kirk William Jr. Gets it all the way out to Lewis. Extra pass there to Patterson. Patterson from the corner three. So I shot Patterson. He's been a thorn in the side of Orangeville forever. It looks like he was trying to get a little physical there with Tipping. Tipping looking for a call. Tipping looks to turn the corner. Beautiful pass there into Daniel Tullick. Tullick, wow, what a, a pump fake, waits for the defender to get off his feet, off the glass now for two, 35-35. And even impressive pass from Tipping as well. Had to really thread the needle there. As if Tullock had left that screen, Kelsey, he left the screen just a shade sooner than he probably should have. The Tipping was still able to make it work. work and then on top game. of that, with Tullock finishing a tough shot, Orangeville's really, they're, they're firing on all cylinders right now. Alex Superman Johnson's got two screens for him up top. He's gonna come off one now for Nastich. Over to Tipping, Tipping. Slings it from the corner. One, two, three. Jameson Tipping. Tough shot for him there. Niagara doing a good job contesting these threes now in this second quarter, but it didn't matter that time. Scoop Jardine. Looking to do something for his team. Looks to get it out there to Kirk Williams Jr., but it's picked off by the Orange Valets. Here's Jamison tipping now. Finds himself wide open. Ryan, another one of those ones where he's just a little bit too wide open. Gets it up to Stefan Nastich now. Releases from the top, nothing but air. Unfortunately, that's a tough shot there. And, and, you know, you don't talk about it enough, the importance of catching in rhythm, you know. Uh, both of us actually kind of grew up as shooters in basketball, and you know the importance of catching it right at your chest, being ready, having your feet set. So anytime that rhythm is kind of messed up, it ends up, it, more often than not, you're, you're going to miss those shots. And unfortunately for that time, Jameson Tipping, every shot that he's missed so far, it's been because he hasn't caught it in rhythm. 9.51 on the clock left to go in this first half. Patterson over to Kirk Williams Jr. A beautiful pass in there to Hall, but better defense by Slim McGee, able to get a split on it. It's gonna go out of bounds. 10 seconds now on the shot clock. One thing I'm noticing very quickly here, Kelsey, is that the Niagara River Lions are very content with kind of hanging around the perimeter, even when one of their teammates are cutting to the basket with the ball. We've seen that a couple of times where guys have tried to throw it out to somebody who's gonna, they're expecting someone to be in the paint, but no one's there, and it ends up going into literally a sea of white, which turns into a quick transition basket for Orangeville. And it, that's something they're definitely gonna have to remedy if they're gonna wanna keep this game close.
the referees now just figuring out what the shot clock could be at because I don't know if they know if it was off of his foot for a kickball it should be reset to 14 seconds if not if it was just a regular out of bounds Ryan the referees are just trying to decide decide whether it's going to be disguise decide decide whether it's going to be 14 seconds or the 10 seconds that it was at when the ball went out of bounds so there's a, I think Slim McGee is saying that it was off Carl uh, <laughs> Carl Hall Carl Hall saying that I, I think it was off Slim McGee we obviously saw that it was off Slim McGee it's just going to be whether or not it was off his foot or it was off some other body part of his absolutely just don't tell McGee that <laughs> he'll plead the fifth till till no end McGee at this point in the game has two points and one rebound, but that doesn't quite do justice for him, Ryan. I mean, he has come out here and absolutely put on a show with his hustle and heart, like he does most nights here for the Orangeville A's. Oh, absolutely, and you're always going to expect at least one, blo one block from McGee, and we've already gotten that, so we'll see if we get more. And consider the fact, as we said in the previous broadcast, that this is also a guy who actually set a record in his conference in college for blocks in a game and blocks in a season. So he's not afraid to get active with any guy, no matter how big they are. Lewis tries to get it down low. And there it is again. Big defense by Daniel Tulek. He, a York grad, has really came to play today with his hustle, with his heart, with his toughness, Ryan. Absolutely, and that baseline is not friendly at all right now to the Niagara River Lions. They've given away three turnovers now on that baseline. Here's Tulek, finds himself open, goes for the slam. A big block by the big man down low. Yeah. Carl Hall, he's got a few big ones now in this game. We'll see if we can possibly get a quick replay on that, but that was just a very athletic maneuver there as Tulloch was trying to dunk it over Hall, but not happening. It's gonna be Orangeville ball now on the baseline. Rick Bodiford brings it out. DiLoretto in the corner. Ooh, Just rattles cool. out that one, knocked out of bounds for Slim McGee. It's going to be Niagara ball. Yeah, that would have that would have looked so smooth, Kelsey. You can see, set his defender up very nicely out to the baseline. Was denied to him. Quick turnaround, fade away. I'm not mad at that shot when there's no one else fading out for a shot. There is nobody that was fading out on the perimeter. They did have 24 seconds on the shot clock, though. It was a little bit forced. On the other end here, here's Lewis. Knows that one's going in as soon as he releases him. Starts running back on defense. It's tied up once again, 38 to 38. Bodiford over to Johnson. Johnson comes off a screen now from Moss. Turns the corner, finds a wide open Moss. Moss goes up off the glass with contact. It's good. Justin Moss, he's an expert in creating that contact and still finishing in the rim. He does that little cock back with his right hand and he just lets, he lets his effort do the work. Zaglinski making it look a bit too easy on the other end too. Bodiford right into the feet of number 12, Marcus Lewis. Referee says there was a kicking motion there. Lewis uh, respectfully disagrees. Orangeville ball now on the sideline. 8-11 on the clock. It's 40 to 40. Here's Alex Johnson finding DiLoretto up top. DiLoretto back to Johnson when he got double teamed. He releases from deep. It's no good. But Slim McGee grabs that offensive rebound and leads that one up to take the lead. Great rebound by McGee. And that's an underrated shot there. It's an extremely tough one. Lewis feeling it tonight. Releases a quick one for the Niagara River Lions. They're able to get one of their only offensive rebounds so far in this game. Here's Zaglinski now. Loses the ball. There's going to be a foul there on Rico DiLoretto. Rico thinks that there was uh, nothing there, but referee says that uh, he got him on his arm somewhere as Zaglinski was uh, going to the basket. He did lose the ball for a moment there, so that really could have been where it happened. So take a look at the replay here. Zaglinski there. Letting the referees know he got his hand. Letting them know every time. Amardi um, now going to make his way back onto the floor for the Niagara River Lions. Tyshawn Patterson going to take a quick seat on the bench. I'm sure he will be right back. They're going to say it's a shooting foul. I thought Zyglinski kind of lost it as he was going down, but he is going to go to the line now for two shots. Zyglinski, very, very consistent free throw shooter, as you can imagine. As I say that, the jinx worked perfectly, Kelsey. Well done. <laughs> he sits at nine points still. This foul shot here, if he makes it, will bring him to double digits in the game. This is, oh, that's rare. 
That is rare, but it looks like it's going to be River Lions ball as somebody stepped out. Shot clock is reset to 24 seconds. It is Niagara ball underneath. Amarty brings it out for this team. Gets it out to Chris Commons. Commons turns the corner now. No one's guarding him, but a big block by Slim McGee. Shot clock shouldn't have gotten reset there. Doesn't matter though, there's Alex Johnson. Johnson with the big steal. Ooh. And to it down to clean it up. 44 now to 40 for the home team. There it is. Alex Johnson attacking the basket, puts it up, no good, but there's Justin Moss to throw it down. I love the way he lands, Ryan. Just like so powerful. Here he is again now up top. A little pump fake. He drives right. Isn't good, but the big man to the big man to the big cleans it up. How great is it to see though, Kelsey, when you got two guys that are of equal hustle just getting to the basketball like that in the paint. It's amazing to see, and it works out for this Orangeville team as they come back the other way now, leading the way by six. DiLoretto, just short. That's a great time by Zaglinski though on the other end of the floor. Amazing bucket. Marcus Lewis puts it in, brings them back within two. This is going to be a close game, folks. Not one that you're going to want to turn off. No, oh, definitely not. It's back and forth in every shot. Alex Johnson drives left, puts it up right. It's a glinty there to, to pick up that board. Justin Moss almost gets the steal. It's Chris Commons now on the other end. Gets it into Lewis. Lewis out to Amarty from three. It's good. Only two. Sorry, Ryan. Yes. Put on the line there. That's only two points. Orange Lays now will take a timeout. As Rich Amarty. It's really an Amarty party. The sign is back out. He's celebrating with his team as they tied up 46-46 versus his old team where he played just last year with the Orangeville A's. You can only imagine, Kelsey, how frustrating it can be sometimes if you're an opponent of a guy like Chris McCarty. Every single time he's making a shot, he's celebrating. And it, honestly, if you've had a bad day and a guy hits a shot on you like that and he just starts walking back, that's got to do something for you psychologically at times, depending on who you are. Or the good <laughs> players, Ryan, when he starts celebrating, will just take the ball and go score because now you're four on five. Of and that was kind of the detriment of, of Richard Marty. You can see him here. That was kind of the detriment of Richard Marty last year. He would celebrate a little bit too much. The opponents would go down and score, and he'd be subbed out almost every time. That's true. That did happen to him a couple of times last season here in Orangeville. But uh, that time, as we just saw in the replay, nothing but net in that corner. Absolutely. We're under six minutes left to go now in this first half. It is 46 to 46 teams. Both tired, both going 100%. Guys, we'll be right back. bread and butter at least it's became his bread and butter after really being a 50 percent free throw shooter last season working on it tirelessly during the offseason and now he's arguably the best free throw shooter on the team well, you didn't jinx him no. <laughs> just the other team that you jinx 
Well, of course. It's because <laughs> it's the hometown, hometown team. Justin Moss here gets 13 to his name now. One more chance at the foul line. I'm loving some of the Niagara fans here at the court side telling Moss to go get a haircut. <laughs> I love Moss's hair. Why aren't they saying that to Slim? His goes down to his bum. <laughs> I think it's because they don't see it. He hides he it. Oh, well. yeah, he tucks it into his jersey. There you go. That, he's smart with that. He, he steers <laughs> clear of the chirps. Here's Lewis now up top. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Gets it into Commons. Five seconds now on the shot clock. Chris Commons against Justin Moss. Pulls up for the three. Nothing but air there. Jake Anderson grabs that board. Looks like there's a foul there. Marty grabbing some arm there. As uh, Justin Moss, after he defended, was sprinting down the court hoping to get a look. And Jake Anderson probably would have found him if it wasn't for that foul by Richard and Marty. So really, it's not, not a bad decision there by the defender. Jamison Tipping once again playing the one for this home team. Right into the hands of Sammy Zaglinski. Zaglinski, one of the best steals. Wow, and a big slam from the Marty party here in his old home gym. Richard and Marty. It's a good decision. Don't force the three. Jake Anderson over to Moss. Moss goes up. There's going to be another foul there. Moss will go to the line once again. That foul. Let's take a look at this replay here. Alley oop. This is Zaglinski. And you know, it's crazy. When I saw that ball go up, Kelsey, I didn't think Amarty could really go up and get it. But of course, he proved me wrong big time there. He's got springs in his shoes, that's for sure, as Richard Marty picks up his second foul. It's one thing also I want to say really Third quickly, foul, though. Third foul, sorry. He's got three fouls, Ryan, now. And the no thing worries. is, sorry, before I interrupt you, it, that foul was but actually going to go to number 15, Maldro, until Amarty looked at the referee and said, give that one to me. Like, I'll take it. But yeah. thinking he only had one, but he's actually got three fouls now. He thought he was only going to have two. Well, so he's going to take a seat now on the bench. Yeah, well, unfortunately, you got to be a little bit more aware when you're playing in the game if you want to say that you're going to take fouls like that. But even just to, to your point also, just wanted to bring up very quickly is very, very impressed with Rick Bodifer because when, when you see a dunk like that, it's very easy to just, with adrenaline pumping, run up the floor, try and get a quick three back right away. But Bodiford showing that patience, getting his defender off his feet, looking to find the better shot, finds Justin Moss cutting on the inside. That is proper basketball if you've ever seen it, and just keeping your emotions under control to try and give your team the best option to score. Nails both the foul shots, bringing his total now to 15 points. Here's Scoop Jardine. Off ball foul here. You see a lot of those in the NBL, Kelsey. Guys are fighting for position. They're hungry. That one goes to Jameson Tipping. That's his second of the game. Here's Chris Commons now over to Jardine. Zaglinski back to Jardine now, loses it. And it goes right out of bounds. Just kind of a misfortune there for the Niagara River Lions. Yeah, it really kind of looked there that Scoop, uh, he was he was trying to make the move with before the basketball fully got into his hands. And of course, whenever you try and do that, that results in uh, turnover. Popcorn uh, fingers, right? Yeah, when they have a little bit too much butter after eating popcorn pregame, a little bit too slippery. <laughs> We'll let him know at halftime. Right, which is impressive when you consider how sticky that ball really can be. Here's Jake Anderson now at the 45. Gets it into Moss. Moss looking to back his way now. Turns. Gets it out to Tipping. Tipping. What a find. Connects. What a From beyond the three, a great pass and a wonderful assist there by the big man down low. Moss keeping his options open as he was attacking the basket. Saw a whole bunch of blue flying out of three defenders. And of course, oh look, there's the open shot. Kicks it open. Great shot by Tipping. Scoop Jardine. Gets it into Hall. Back out now to Sammy Zaglinski. Chris Commons from the top. Tries to answer, no good. Bonifer cleans that one up with a board. Unfortunately, Zaglinski trying to do the same thing here, but not happening. Jameson picks it up from beyond the three. Can he do it back to back? It rattles oh, out. That's a backbreaker as a shooter. You know he felt good about that one. Zaglinski, a rare miss for that point guard. Here's Jake Anderson now in the corner. Gets it over to Bodiford. Bodiford looks good from here. It's just long, though. There's going to be a foul call. Jameson Tippett gets two fouls now in a row. One thing I want to say real quickly, Kelsey, is that you know hopefully one thing you want to see from the Orange Fillets, if Niagara's going to give you those three-point shots, take them. 
but take them with confidence because it seems like there's a lot of hesitation going on right now about trying to find the pass on the inside, which is good because it has been working for them to a certain extent. But if if the Niagara River Lions are going to give you that kind of space and you've already, you already know as a professional basketball player how well you can shoot the basketball, then shoot the basketball. There's a lot of, there was just a lot of hesitation in those last couple of uh, trips up the floor, and that's just something you don't necessarily want to see if you're an Orange Relays fan, especially from a team that can shoot the ball so well when they want to. Especially because we're looking at the shooters on the Orange Relays, Ryan. Rick Modifert is two for two from the three right now. He has nine points. Jamison Tipping, another shooter, has nine points. These guys are, these guys are hitting shots. Just maybe uh, being a little conservative, but knowing that they got those big guys down low who have, I mean, Moss has 16 points off the bench. Right. Devin Nastic, another six point. Uh, Slim McGee, another six point. So, I mean, beating the big guys isn't a bad idea at this point. No, not, not at all. And really, even to say that it, it's a good it's a good reason to see that, you know, guys are hesitating to shoot that three because, once again, that was all happening in transition. And I think that's part of the reason why Niagara was giving them the space. But once again, if you're comfortable enough to be taking seven, three, four, five, three-point shots already in the first half, then don't stop now. Be confident with that shot. Take it. It's what you're here for. <laughs> At this point in the game, the Orangeville A's are 5 for 7 from beyond the arc. And the Niagara River Lions 5 for 13. So a little bit better of a percentage there. 5 for 17. The Niagara River Lions are 5 for 13. I misheard you, Kelsey. I'm sorry. I thought I heard 7. My bad. <laughs> Look, quite a game that we still have here. The Niagara River Lions only trailing by five, and it really feels like it's a little bit more when you see how many effective plays that Orangeville's been able to kind of run their offense here. But once again, full credit goes to Niagara sticking through all of the, the highlight plays that Orangeville's been pulling off so far in front of the home crowd. It's Rich Amarty right now that feels like he's playing in front of the home crowd. Ryan, he is keeping Niagara in it with 14 points. And keep in mind, Kelsey, that was his total last game. So he's feeling it today. Yeah, not even at the half yet. He's got 14. He's three for four from the foul line. One for one from beyond the arc. And five for six, field goal. He's feeling it. Yeah, exactly. Ty <laughs> John Patterson moves it over to Williams Jr. Out to Zaglinski, able to save it into Jardine. That, those, his passes like that off the foot for Zaglinski, those are passes that the Orange Relays have to get. Justin Moss now can be called with his second foul of the game. And especially if it ends in a foul for your team when they've already started off as sloppy as they did in their offensive set. As a coach, that's got to that's gotta be driving Coach uh, Brandon Lozowski of the Orange Relays nuts watching that. Zaglinski into Hall. Hall going against Stefan Nastic now. Gets it into Kirk Williams Jr. A great pass and a great finish. One thing about Kirk Williams Jr. There's a reason he's averaging 16. He's a hard veteran of this league. He knows exactly where to be on the floor when guys are making a move to the basket. Here's Nastich now. Back to the basket. A great drop step. Rick Bodiford puts it back in. Speaking of guys knowing where they need to be when the shot goes up, there's Rick Bodiford doing it on the other end as well. He's got 11 points now, the veteran. A way better night than he had yesterday. What did he have for breakfast yesterday? And what did he have for breakfast today? That should be a question you can ask him in the first Scoop Jardine from the three. Scoop almost looked like he was looking for a foul there as he's shouting over to the ref. Here's Rick Bodiford now over to Johnson. Johnson coming off a screen from Justin Moss. They're double teaming off of those uh, high ball screens, able to find the open man in Bodiford, but he just can't put it in. Fortunately there, Bodiford looked like he had some kind of dead legs there a little bit. Tyshawn Patterson shows up how it's done. That one good for three points. Tyshawn Patterson once again. He's, he, he really is one of those kind of guys though. He's a late bloomer. He's all about the second half. And it'll be interesting to see what he'll be able to put together as uh, Niagara's now taking the lead. Anderson trying to take it back. Nasty with that offensive rebound yeah. and puts it in off the glass to take the lead right back. 57 to 56. Nastich had the angle, had the position. Gave us a defender a little bit of a bump before he went up to clear the path. Excellent finish under the rim for the seven-footer. Ziglinski gets his defender on skates there. Gets it out to Tyshawn Patterson. Can he do it two times in a row? A big board there by Bodifer. Here's Johnson now at the 45. Comes off two screens. Gets it out to Justin Moss. He's been so hot from that mid-range. Gets his own rebound, but it's blocked by Hall. It's going to go Niagara. River 
borderline foul. That's a tough finish, and unfortunately, Justin Moss, as talented as he is as a player, as that shot goes up here, we're seeing a bump actually here from uh, Stefan Nastic, showing that great finish, getting position on Hall. And going back to the most recent play, Justin Moss, he's a guy who lives in the paint. Occasionally, he's going to get blocked. I mean, we're used to seeing him getting blocked at least once a game, but absolutely relentless in his movement towards the basket. He's going to take a quick seat on the bench, however, Daniel Pelle comes in for him. A big miss there by Hall. That one, we'll give him half a point for that one, too. We'll keep our own score. I was going to say. <laughs> oh, what a find. Tulloch now wide open on the left hand side, puts it in off the glass. Once again, Niagara, because of this fast paced offense that Orangeville's doing, they're doing a lot of ball watching, not necessarily watching where their defenders are, or excuse me, where, the, where their opponents are. They're kind of more all gravitating towards the ball, trying to get a stop there. But because of that, guys like Jake Anderson, Rick Botterford, and Alex Johnson are finding their big men down low for easy buckets. That's his second foul right now of the game, but it looked like it was good defense, Ryan, but he's going to be called with the block. It looked like almost the refs didn't know which one to call, a charge or a block. Had to kind of talk to each other there to see who was moving and who was kind of standing first. Absolutely, yeah. They Siglinski now is going to go to the line. It, it definitely looked like the Nastic did everything he could at the last moment there to, uh, to, to basically get his feet planted, but I think Siglinski just happened to run into him just a little bit uh, too late for Nastic, and because of that, we're going back on the line, and he's got a chance to make it a one-point game here. Sammy Zaglinski with that one has 10 points now to his name. Alex go. Johnson gets it stolen from him. 2-1. And with one second, Kirk Williams Jr. Count it. steals the lead going into the half. Niagara River Lions at 60. The Orangeville A's at 59. And what a back and forth battle, Kelsey. Unfortunately, for all the flair and dramatics of the Orangeville A's, they still find themselves down one point to the Niagara River Lions, who are just finding ways to get it done. It's not pretty, it's not beautiful, but man, has, Ni has Niagara came to play today. A big first half by Rich Amarty of the Niagara River Lions. He's got 14 points heading into the half. Sammy Zulinski sitting at 11, and on the other end, Justin Moss has 16 points, Rick Bottom for 11. Absolutely, it's gonna be very interesting to see how this is all gonna carry over going into the second half, Kelsey. All right, guys, you've got 15 minutes. Go grab a drink, grab a snack, we'll be back. This is action you do not want to miss. Absolutely not, see you soon.
is killing me. No, I'll do the third.
guys, I got Justin Moss with me at halftime. Justin, you were questionable coming into this game. We didn't know if you were going to play or not. At the half, you got 16 points. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel pretty all right. You know, uh, my injury is manageable, so I'm trying to stick it off on my team. Fair enough. And now at the half, you're trailing by just one point after a buzzer beater by Niagara. What did Coach say to you at halftime? Uh, we just got to take pride in defense. We allowed them to get too many points that second half, I mean the first half. So this half, we looking to pick the defense up by a lot. Right. Good luck. Welcome back now to ACV. You heard it first here from Justin Moss, who's leading the way right now with 16 points. He's leading the way, actually, of this entire game. Richard Marty on the Niagara River Lions, leading for his team with 14. The A's need to keep at it to break this losing streak that they're on of four games. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this there's nothing more important right now than for the A's to get out hot in this third quarter. Uh, you know, anyone who watches basketball enough knows that the third quarter is such a huge part of the game, and it, it can set the it can dictate the pace for the rest of uh, the rest of this half, really. And it just kind of looks like both teams are ready to explode offensively, but we'll see if they can keep pace with each other. Is it going to be that Orangeville that's going to be able to get out there, especially with their three-point shooting and cuts to the rim, that's going to put them ahead? Or is it going to be the Niagara River Lions who've done such a fantastic job of, of, of making individual efforts to go to the basket? It's a very impressive thing so far. And really, when you add in the fact that this is going to be an incredibly impressive matchup going down into the going down into the final few minutes here, especially considering both teams trying to get themselves out of the bottom of the conference. And it can, the journey can start here for both of them, Kelsey. You got it. And now looking at these stats, Ryan, I mean, these teams are so even. The score obviously shows it. Only down by one point right now, Orangeville is to the Niagara River Lions. The bench scoring is a little bit off right now. Uh, Niagara has 23 and Orangeville has 32, but I mean, uh, Justin Moss came on from the bench. He's usually a starter. He has 16 of those 32 points. So, I mean, that's a little bit unfair to say. Their points in the paint, exactly the same, 26 and 26. Points off turnovers, 12 and 10. So, I mean, one more basket for the Orange Villets. But other than that, I mean, they're pretty even. Otherwise, the leading score is 16, 14 for their respective teams. Uh, leading rebounders, five and four. Orange Villets has four. Uh, Zaglinski there has five. And assist leader, I mean, four and six. These teams are even, and it's such a great game to watch. Oh, absolutely. When you added the fact, really, it almost looks like it's when you have two teams that are identical in the stat sheet, they tend to be playing identically in a bit. It's a very impressive stat line so far for both teams as we get kick off this second half. Here's Jameson tipping now up top. Over to Johnson. Johnson comes off a screen from Tulloch. Tulloch makes the start again. In the second half, Nastich releases and a big board there by the, the uh, leading scorer of Niagara with 14 points. Zaglinski releases a quick one with 23 seconds on the shot clock. No good. Jameson tipping smart though to go ahead and uh, challenge that shot. As we know, Sammy Zaglinski, he can hit it from anywhere on the floor. Jameson tipping tries to get a floater off from the baseline. No good. Fun fact, Kelsey, that's his first attempted shot inside the three-point line. Fun fact, Ryan. The kids came out at the 45. Amarty. Daniel Tulloch is going to get called with the off ball foul, trying to keep in line with Chris Commons. Unfortunately, Chris Commons is a very, very big man. He's not afraid to work inside or out. Mixing it up there with Tulloch. And the uh, four year York man has his hands full. Zaglinski gets it back into Commons now. Here's a Marty from the three. A little fake. He goes up and he gets the bucket with the foul. Again, a Marty party here at Athlete Institute. Now with 16 points, a chance to bring it to 17 with 11 minutes left to go in the third. Richard and Marty uh, halfway through those uh, through those warm-ups at, at halftime uh, was, was dancing a little bit to Rihanna. You've seen he's, he's kind of feeling work, himself. Work, 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 work. Yeah, feeling himself a little bit right now. A little Can't bit too much, though. too much, though, because that foul <laughs> shot doesn't go for him. It's like, there's the Amarty we know and love. 
do something great than something frustrating. There we go. He's three for four from the line so far in this game. Here's Jameson tipping on the other end. Pulls up from beyond the arc. That one, no good. He's over two so far to start the second half. Yeah, you can see he was kind of leaning right as he released, as you can tell. He's waiting for it. Zaglinski attacking Daniel Tulloch there, but just can't connect as Tulloch grabs that rebound. Great heads up play there by Zaglinski. Saw his defender was completely turned around and, and turned big. around again. Yeah. <laughs> but no finish. Rick Bodiford gets it into Nastich. Nastich gets tangled up there with Chris Kopp as an easy call for the referees. So that was a, a great move there by Nastich to get into the game and establish his presence. One thing I kind of want to see, though, a little bit quick, a little bit quicker movement off the ball there, uh, Kelsey, and also a little bit more of an accurate pass. Obviously, you understand that when Nastich is trying to set up that post, you want to put it just outside of his hand so he can effectively get the ball without someone swiping it away. But as soon as he got it, he kind of lost his handle on it for a second. And while that was happening, Bodifer was cutting to the basket, and he had a wide open look. So we're hoping to see if they can uh, clean that up a little bit with that post play so that we can, the, the Orange Relays can start getting some more consistent buckets. Orange Relays still trailing by two points. There's an offensive foul here on number 15, Samuel Meldrow. And I'm pretty sure uh, you're going to want to be subbed out soon as Meldrow picks up his fourth foul of the game. Carl Hall now going to uh, check in the next time there's a stoppage play. Well, when your center body is your point guard, it's a pretty easy call for the referees. Johnson goes up off the glass. That one, no good. It's going to go out of bounds. Both teams kind of arguing which way it's going to go. It looks like neither are happy right now. going to be Niagara River Lions ball. Niagara River Lions ball. Here's Zaglinski now bringing it up for this visiting team. They're still leading the way by two points just after the 10 minute mark. Zaglinski, a miscommunication there it goes right out of bounds. It's another turnover for this team. Once again, Niagara, both teams though, whenever they seem to be going on a run, they kind of, they, they, they cough it up in a couple of sets consecutively. We'll see who finds the consistency to pull away the win here. Here's Johnson for the A's, gets it over to Nastich. A quick jumpy from the dunking spot is no good. And the defensive rebound goes to Niagara. Here's a Marty with a Euro step. He goes up, he's blocked by Nastich twice. He's able to clean it back in. And another second chance point now to this Niagara team. They've only got three second chance points, Ryan, in this entire game. As there's a big three there by J.K. Anderson, who's a player. Looks like Kirk Williams Jr. actually right in the middle, holding his stomach, Ryan. Looks like maybe he got a, a shoulder or an elbow or something to the gut. There was a, a, a little altercation there between Stefan Nastich and uh, I believe that's Chris Commons on the floor, right? So that's uh, Commons that was on the floor. There was a tangle up as it was happening, and you can see Nastich gave, clearly did give him a shove in the chest, but uh, well, it's it's kind of interesting to see. Maybe he hit a, 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 a joint in his shoulder, or maybe he kind of hit something that's already been kind of hurt. Or He's holding like his stomach almost. Now the trainer's helping him up. He should get a little, yeah, it's Chris Commons, sorry. Get an applause here. He's still buckled over, like something really hurt him kind of in his like, so it looks like he got up and is now trying to fight. So that's not a good idea. And and Rich Amarty actually is holding him back. Rich Amarty really holding him back here. Chris Commons looking to fight somebody. It looks like maybe Rick Bodiford handling it, saying, "Man, like you got to calm down." And for anyone who was who was here watching Orangeville A's last year, Richard Marty is not someone who would usually hold someone back, really stepping up as a leader on this Niagara team. It does seem so, so far, especially when you consider the fact that Marty himself uh, had a couple of uh, questionable moments here the last time that the Niagara River Lions came to play the Orangeville A's. Uh, but right here, clearly trying to act as the cooler head here. And, you know, when you add in the fact as well that Marty's having the game that he's having right now, 18 points, uh, three rebounds. He knows he's in a bit of foul trouble as well with three personal fouls. Shooting seven of nine from the field, one of one from the three-point line. Like, you know, it, it does kind of make sense, though, that Amarty, he's one of those kind of guys where he's having a good game. He's going to try and keep everybody involved, keep everyone positive. Uh, and when, he's dancing. Exactly. He's back so he's, to dancing. He's, he's back to dancing, and this he's, he's trying to relax. <laughs> he's just telling everyone, hey, relax. 
we've got the lead. Let's close this one out here. Let's keep moving forward. And especially considering the fact that he knows how valuable Chris Commons is to this team, Kelsey. When you add in as well, we're just going to take a look to see if the referees are going to have a call on anything here. Because it really kind of looked like the referees didn't see much. During that altercation, all eyes were on the plays as it was happening with Jake Anderson. Nope, they are going to give Zaglinski a shot. So it was an unsporting foul on Stefan Nastich, going to be called super late, and Zaglinski is going to go to the line for Chris Commons, who's off on the bench now uh, after suffering that injury. And Sandy Zaglinski having an odd night from the free throw line, as he is now two for six from the free throw line. His coach really shaking his head here, saying, you know, I, I put Zaglinski in there to take those foul shots from the unsporting foul. Because you're so good from the line tonight, he's just not showing. Who knows? Dare I say it, the ball never lies. Carl Hall goes up, that one no good. Daniel Tellick comes down with it. There's going to be a foul there on number 31. Kirk Williams Jr. is going to be Orangeville ball on the baseline. Williams, once again, I, I like calling him... Uh, <laughs> I like calling him the agitator. He's, he's the agitator on a lot of teams, but he's very intelligent. He knows where the referees are positioned. He tries to find ways to kind of keep guys' hands down when they go up for rebounds. It's, why, it's one of the reasons why he's so effective at what he does. But unfortunately there, he kind of got caught. But as always, it's not illegal if the ref don't see it. But that time, he did. Great defense there by Kirk Williams Jr. Alex Johnson got deep into the paint, tried to kind of hook it into Steve Stefan Nastich, but it's knocked away by 31. Once again, Kirk Williams, very active hands. Five seconds now on the shot clock. The Orangeville A's kick it out to Nastich. Over to Tulloch now, three seconds. Somebody's got to get it up. Alex Johnson from the three puts it up. It's nothing but air for that one as Amardi picks up another board. Yeah, it definitely looked like Tulloch didn't realize that there was only five seconds on the shot clock there because he had an open look. There's a nice turn over there. Rick Bodiford steals it right out of the hands of his former teammate, but on the other end, a big block by Amardi when Stefan Nastich leads it up. Hardy showing just how high he can get up there. Great block, but Nastic, nasty Nastic, down low, ready to put it back. Carl Hall finds himself open. That foul is going to go to Jake Anderson down low. Carl Hall now will go to the foul line. Here we go. Take a look at the replay here as Botiford getting rejected, but Alex Johnson, what awareness there in midair. Knows he's got the big man right next to him, just grabs him with his left hand, little shuffle pass, and Nastic right there for the finish. Telek is going to make, way, make his way excuse me, out of the game as Justin Moss comes on for the Orangeville A's as well as Scoop Jardine for Niagara River Lions. Your favorite Niagara River Lion. Outside of maybe Richard Amardi. Just because his name's Scoop. <laughs> Carl Hall now at the line for this team. The Georgia native went to Wichita State for two years where he averaged 12.59 points and 6.8 rebounds per game. He was the Mountain Valley Conference Newcomer of the Year in 2012, and he's really showing his presence down low today. Yeah, absolutely. Getting active and involved in just about every single play. He's had some very huge blocks in this game as well. An interesting thing about Carl Hall is in 2007, he was diagnosed with a heart condition that kind of you lose consciousness. So he had to stop basketball because there wasn't enough blood. <laughs> Going to his brain, <laughs> but he's back now as of 2009 as Justin Moss is laughing actually at the foul line and how that turned out. What a finish there, but we've talked about this multiple times, Kelsey, where Justin Moss, as we take a look at the replay, he just has amazing body control. Like you just see him like every time, we're, we're due for one of those at least once every four or five games where he'll just kind of throw it up there and he just has such a good awareness of where the rim is that sometimes those will just fall. Moss just laughing at himself as well though, knows that that one was definitely the luck of the Irish in that shot. <laughs> Here's the Glinsky now up top. Gets it into Hall. Hall, I was just saying, uh, got back on the right medication. Now he's able to play basketball. Now he's been playing pro since 2011 as Kirk William Jr. turns the corner, gets the foul and the bucket. It's and one after and one here at Athlete Institute as Williams Jr. goes to the line for one. Williams Jr., you forgot, you left out the flex. You, you, gotta, you gotta flex a little bit on him if you're gonna finish at the rim like that. And Kirk Williams, the instigator, getting it done. Missed foul shot on both these and ones that we just saw. Huge rebound there by Nastic. Just took it right out of the hands of the Niagara defender going for that board. Johnson spots up from the top. No good, Zaglinski boards. Johnson struggling from the three-point line today. 
Here's Scoop Jardine. Makes it look easy. A little uh, mid-range jumpy from the elbow. Yeah, something you want to kind of see now is Alex Johnson start moving the ball around, get his teammates involved. He's 0 for 5 from the 3 ball. Bottifer with Bottifer. the answer. Give that 13 points now to Bottifer so far in this game. Lewis makes it look easy as nobody gets back to defend. Unfortunately, the defense is really taking a hit right now for the Orange Relays. They really have to start blocking it down now. Johnson over to Anderson. Anderson drives baseline, kicks it out to Moss. I want to see if it goes. I wish that one counted for the big man, but he steps out of bounds as he catches it. Unfortunately, that's unfamiliar territory there for Justin Moss as he kicks out. Not too unfamiliar, though. He, he nailed it. Yeah, he did find it there. As you look at the outside here, the find on the inside. There's Moss once again, specifically in this Nails gym, Nails it. Nails it. Down. Lost his footing there a little bit. Scoop Jardine now bringing it up for the River Lions as Jamison Tipping makes his way back onto the court for the Orange Villains. Wide open haul. And it's going to be a goaltending by Slim McGee. Two points for Niagara. Unfortunately, Carl Hall showing some excellent patience there under the rim, waiting for the first defender to fly by. And the importance of getting up extremely quickly to the basket. It's, it's something people don't talk about a lot, but guys that can get to the basket extremely quickly, especially if they're under it, are the guys that are usually going to get the baskets. Jake Anderson with a fadeaway, no good. Amarty grabs it. That's not exactly the shot I can imagine that Coach Zosky drew up. Hall. Second shot clock now as Jardine tries to get it up. Jamison Tipping finally cleans it up for the ace. Jake That's Anderson it. a little back That's and forth. Good decision with the extra, extra pass. Absolutely. Give up the good shot for the great shot. This time, give Anderson a chance to get himself set. And what did I say? What were we talking about in the first half? Catching it in rhythm. And Jake Anderson knocks it down. Justin Moss almost gets the steal there. It's in the hands of Scoop Jardine now, 11 seconds on the shot clock. A little give and go action, he gets it right back to Hall underneath. That big body just can't be stopped tonight. And Scoop, what a find there under the basket. As he went off the switch with Justin Moss, wraps the ball literally around Moss's body inside the Hall for the finish. Oh. Anderson. Jake Anderson has been back to back on fire right now for the Orange Villains as he goes up and under. Scoops it in, plus it's on the line for one more as Zaglinski comes on now for Scoop Jardine. And we've just seen impressive finish after impressive finish here, Kelsey. So far in this game, Anderson once again showing that ability to get to the rim when he needs to. He's been a big factor so far in the last uh, minute and a half offensively for the Orangeville A's. Leading the way right now for Orangeville, Justin Moss sitting at 18 points, Rick Bodiford with 13, and Stefan Nastich with 11 for the Niagara River Line. Leading the way still is Rich Amarty with 18 points, with 11 points is Sammy Zaglinski, and right behind him, nine points is Carl Hall, big man down low. Ryan, one of the stats that I like looking at right now is second chance points. The Orange Villains right now have 18 second chance points, and it's uh, Niagara only has four, and that really goes to show kind of the hustle and heart on the offensive rebounds. Yeah, absolutely. When you add in the fact as well, something that we kind of noticed in that first half is uh, that, you know, Niagara, anytime that the ball was going up on their defensive end, they were kind of more focused on going after the basketball as opposed to sealing out their opponents and then going for the basketball. And that's led to a lot of second chance opportunities. And when you have guys, especially when you have big guys who have hands as, as consistent as Stefan Nastich, as Slim McGee, as Justin Moss, these guys are very, very good at seeking out the ball. They're very good at controlling the ball. They're very good at knowing where they need to be on the floor to get control of those rebounds. And when you add in the fact, the athleticism of, of, of Justin Moss, when you add in the length and athleticism of Slim McGee and the timing that he has, once again, this is a guy who averages at least a block a game. So when you have that, you're going to give yourself an opportunity every single time to come away with the victory here for the Orange Villains. Ryan, the other thing to look at here, just I mean, Orangeville is shooting 65% from the free throw line, a pretty bad night, but then you look over at Niagara, who's last in the league in free throw percentage, they're shooting only 50% from the line, and I mean, only winning by one right now. Imagine if they sunk those other eight foul shots that they lost, they're eight for 16 right now, they'd be up by so much more. Oh, absolutely, and really, once again, it's the, this, this is what you see, though, when you have teams battling it out at the bottom of the conference. The, the teams that win are the ones 
that make the fewest do the amount. Little of, things, yeah. They do the little things. It's they the make bunnies, the fewest mistakes. It's the mistakes. foul shots. Yep, exactly. Speaking of foul shots, Jake Anderson now will go to the line for one more. If you're just tuning in now, I feel sorry for you because it's been such an exciting game. But <laughs> Jake Anderson just went up and under a little scoop, and now he'll have the and one to add to his stat line. There it is, Orange Valais, number two team in the league in free throw shooting at 73% as a team. Pretty impressive, Kelsey. Scoop Jardine. Gets it over to Hall. Hall has been unstoppable. 11 points now for the big man. Big man's getting it done here in the second half offensively after a very impressive defensive uh, first half. Here's Jake Anderson now coming off a few screens from the big man. Gets it over to McGee. McGee to tipping. Anderson now at the 45, five seconds on the shot clock, pulls up from beyond the three. Nothing but net. Jake Anderson making something out of nothing when the, when the screens and the cuts weren't working. He decide, forget it, I'm just going to do it myself, and knocks down a huge shot for Orangeville. 11 points now for Jake Anderson as Kirk William Jr. looks for the answer off the back rim. Moss gets another rebound. You see Williams hesitated just a little bit there as the ball goes out of bounds. And it's going to be Rick Bodiford thinks it went off a leg of a Niagara Riverlines no, player. Was, but He thinks his hand was tipped. Uh, He's looking for the foul there, but it's going to be Niagara replay. ball. And here's Jake Anderson showing him just how much of a dead eye he can be knocking down that three with a hand in his face. Here's Ziglinski now over to Kirk Williams Jr. Gets it into Hall. Hall going against Slim and Moss right back into him. Looking to back his way in. Another two points, 13 points now. And I'm pretty sure most of them, Ryan, in the second half. Oh, absolutely. Carl Hall, excellent position there on Slim McGee. And unfortunately, McGee, as great of a shot blocker as he is, not exactly able to kind of deal with the size of Carl Hall one-on-one. -on -one. And if Hall is able to drop that shoulder into McGee and create the separation, it's almost impossible to block that shot. Richard Marty gets called with his fourth foul of the game against Jamison Tippett ah. Lewis. We'll come on and give uh, Amarty a quick seat on the bench. Amarty kind of laughing as he comes back on, thinking that was not a good foul call. Richard Amarty, as he's walking back here, calling it a bad call, and I quote. <laughs> Slim McGee misses the mid-range. Jardine now over to Zaglinski into Kirk Williams Jr. Misses that bunny. But Lewis, able to clean it up, gets it back over to Zaglinski, who's going to calm things down a little bit. Ten seconds now on the shot clock. Jardine slips his way in there. The defense got caught sleeping on that one as they take the lead now 81 to 78. Absolutely. One thing, unfortunately, we're not seeing as consistently in this second half here is communication on the Orange Valet side. Uh, they've given up a lot of easy buckets in the paint, and that's something that they were not doing in that first half. Jamison Tipping drives left, loses it. Able to get it out, hopefully, to one of his teammates, but there is going to be a kick ball. And a fight breaks out. This one between Jamison Tipping and Lewis. And tempers have been flaring here in AI today, Kelsey. It's, uh, it's quite a game. You look at sellout crowd, a lot of energy, a lot of things going on right now. Interesting to see what's. I think there's going to be a technical foul against Jamison Tipping here. We'll have to see if it's uh, double technical, but they're sending both teams back to their benches to kind of uh, take a quick breath, grab some water. Yeah, definitely. I think it's uh, well warranted here for this game. We'll Let's take, take a look. another look at what happened here. He kind of lost the ball there, landed on it, and it was a str struggle for possession between a bunch of guys here as Jamison Tipping. Pushed Lewis off of him. He got up and was not happy that he got kind of stuck in with Lewis. That really looks like something that was kind of brewing over Kelsey because there was nothing there specifically in that play that looks like it was worth that was worth a real it wasn't it didn't look like it was worth a fight. It looks like there had been things that had been said before that led up to that. And I think tipping basically hit his boiling point there with uh, with a player over top of him the way that he was. And unfortunately though, when you're scrambling for the basketball like that, you can't necessarily just jump off a guy right away. So, so there's actually gonna be an unsporting call on both of the players, both on Jamison Tipping and on Marcus Lewis of the Niagara River Lions. So no foul shots either way because they kind of cancel each other out. Yeah. So it's just gonna be um, 
I can't see the possession arrow from here, but it's going to be uh, whoever's <laughs> possession it is like it's a jump ball. It's going to be kind of called like a jump ball. It's going to be their possession yeah. on the uh, on the sideline. Uh, you know what, though, I'm, I'm impressed with the ref uh, the referees here, kind of keeping everyone keeping everyone in the game, even really because Tipping did everything. Tipping did everything short of throwing a punch there. <laughs> so it's going to be it's going to be Niagara ball now on the baseline again. I just it's kind of just like a possession, so it's going to be called both players. Lewis and Jameson tipping, who are still guarding each other here on the other end. Both got unsporting fouls. It's just going to be in the possession. It's going to be Niagara Ball coming back the other way. New shot clock, new everything. Fresh start for everyone. Bordelais now in the bonus. Uh, Niagara, one foul out. One thing's for certain, Kelsey. Whoever wins this game now is going to have some serious bragging rights. And, you know, the next home game that Orangeville has, you know who it's against, Ryan? Oh, I, I can only imagine who. <laughs> the Niagara River Lions. <laughs> it's swiped out of bounds there by Daniel Tulloch. 24 seconds again now on the shot clock. Niagara gets a new possession. Once again now, Chris Commons back into the game for the first time since that uh, dust-up with Stefan Nastic. So we'll see what uh, he's going to be able to bring to the table. Keep in mind, this is still one of the more talented players in the entire league. Here's Zaglinski now up top. Over to Scoop. I just love it. Like, Scoop. <laughs> <laughs> Scoop. Gets it out to Kirk Williams Jr. Finds himself open. Takes one step in and the jump shot. No good. Chris Commons will go up, though. And there's going to be a foul called here from behind. That one, I think, will go to number 21, Daniel Tulloch. Chris Commons finding that, uh, finding it out on the inside there. You can tell he he wanted the ball right from the very beginning of the offensive set before he had to switch over to the opposite post. But once he got it, he made the most of it going right to the rim. And of course, here comes Stefan Nastic in. Telek is going to take a seat on the bench, Ryan. He's got five fouls, only uh, one left to give, and there's still a whole another quarter. So Nastic makes his way in. Now both teams sitting in bonus for the last two minutes and 30 seconds of this quarter. This has been a very physical game, Kelsey, and of course the uh, the score sheet is uh, explaining that right now as you Commons can see all the fouls. Commons only has three points right now, Ryan. He just sunk his third point of the game. Make that four points for him now of the night. Not like him. He's having quite a quiet night. Absolutely, but you know what? Everyone's due for everyone's due for something, and we've seen guys who start off with three points and then explode for 15 or 20 in a quarter. So there's nothing uh, that wouldn't be too surprising. Here's Zaglinski now from the corner three. Rolls around and it's good for Trey. Zaglinski, he's uh, only two for five on the night, but not afraid to chuck it at any given moment. Justin Moss looks to get it out to Anderson, but it's tipped there by Zaglinski. It's going to stay with the Orangeville A's. 15 seconds now on the shot clock. Here's our, here we are, Zami Zaglinski. Showing just how well. Look how many times it rolls <laughs> around the rim before going in. And not just that, though. See how quickly he was able to set his feet and release on that shot. Just absolute textbook finish. Jake Anderson. Speaking a of textbook. A beautiful move there. <laughs> spins about 600 times before it spins around the rim. 600 times is good for two points. Here's Zaglinski now. Out to Commons. Commons from the top. No good. Scoop cleans that one up. Here's another second chance point they're able to try and get. Here's Commons. Some good ball movement here, though, by Niagara. Get away with one there, though. <laughs> Kirk Williams Jr. on the left-hand side. Body step in Nastics down low for two. And don't look now, Kelsey, but it's an eight-point lead. Make six. it six. Great ball though. movement there by Justin Moss and Jameson Tipping. Well, unfortunately, though, one thing that you, you kind of don't want to see as an Orangeville Ace fan, but it's happening. Niagara's finding three, four, five different ways to score the basket right now. Half-court offense, fast transition, corner threes, finishing in the post. They're doing everything offensively right now, but they're, as I said, in Commons getting called with a travel, so we'll see if the momentum can swing over. Chris Commons there called for the traveling violation after bumping the big body of Justin Moss down low. One minute left to go now in this third quarter. Here's Alex Johnson for the Orangeville A's. Great defense there by Marcus Lewis. Gets it up to Zaglinski now. Zaglinski over to Kirk Williams Jr. Tries to save it to Marcus Lewis, but it's those popcorn fingers once again <laughs> just slides out of bounds. Orangeville ball with 50 seconds left to go in the third. Yeah, Sammy Zaglinski giving it a chance there, but unfortunately he doesn't realize who is guarding him is Alex Johnson. And if Alex Johnson, he's faster than Kirk Williams. Let's just put out the obvious there. He was able to cut to the basket a little bit before Williams. Thus, Williams had no choice but to try and throw it in. 
Jake Anderson finds Nastich. Nastich splits oh, the defenders, just can't make it, but he's able to clean himself up for another second chance points for the big man. It, it, it pays to be seven feet tall. Did I mention he was seven feet tall? <laughs> Three second difference now between the game clock and the shot clock. Niagara is going to look to take as much time as they can for this last possession so that Orangeville doesn't have a chance to get closer to them in the score. Right now they're leading by four. Orangeville doing what they need to do here. Big stop now. Looks like it could have been great go. defense there by Nastich, but eight seconds to go. Here's Justin Moss. A big block by Marcus Lewis. Justin Moss cleans it up, though. And now still one second on the clock. If it goes, no good by Kirk William Jr. there. What an end to the third quarter, Ryan. Let's take another look at this Justin Moss finish on the other end, plus the block. Look at this, a first block, a great defensive stop by Marcus Lewis. But when he's kind of facing the basket, Ryan, he uses those big, broad shoulders to create space for him. Putting it in now, only down by two. 88 to 86, Niagara River Lions lead the way over the Orangeville Ace. Absolutely, and Justin Moss showing just how much composure he, he has being able to get that second chance finish there. Uh, really, it's just kind of a, a microcosm of this Orangeville Ace team. Every time they've kind of been quote unquote punched in the mouth, they've been able to come back up, no pun intended of course, but they've been able to come back and make sure that they're keeping themselves within striking distance right now. They knew this was gonna be a tough matchup. They knew Niagara isn't what their record says. And of course, we're getting exactly what we expected. And this is a battle back and forth going into the fourth. All right, guys. Now, like Ryan said, heading into the fourth, let's talk about some leaders at this point. Justin Moss has 20 points for the Orangeville A's. Jake Anderson, a quick 16 points. He only had nine at the half, so great third quarter for him with 13 points. Stefan Nastich and Rick Bodiford are third for the Orangeville A's. On the other end, the Niagara River Lions leading the way for them with 18 points is Rich Amarty. Right below him, 13 points is Carl Hall. Had a big third quarter with 14 points. Same as Zaglinski and 10 for Kirk Williams Jr. And with that, we're just going to take a quick look here at these highlights. We'll be back in just a moment with the start of the fourth quarter. It is Orange, Orange Valley's 86, Niagara River Lions 88. Institute. This is one quarter you want to stay tuned for. Don't leave the screen whatsoever. It is 88 to 86. Niagara is leading the way right now over the Orangeville Ace. Here's Marcus Lewis. Kicks it out to Zaglinski. Only nine seconds on the shot clock. Tyshawn Patterson nails it from the 45 right in front of Anderson. And Patterson, who I don't even believe played a minute in that third quarter, just jumps right onto the fourth and gets right back to business. That guy is a walking microwave, ladies and gentlemen. Well, he wears the long sleeve plus the gloves. There's a big block by Kirk Williams Jr. Here's Tyshawn Patterson on the other end. Looking to do it. Two possessions in a row. Give him five points in the first minute of this game. What an impressive finish there by Tyshawn Patterson. How about that, Kelsey? In the first 40 seconds of the fourth quarter, he had five points, bringing the Niagara River Lions now up 93 to 86. Here's Johnson now for the A's. Gets it over to Moss. Moss. Finds himself open. A great pass over all the way. A skip to Jamison Tipping, who checks it up for the answer three. Jamison Tipping. That's a big shot for him. Great way to recompose himself. Night. Yep. After getting into that dust up in the third quarter, you need that as a player. Get yourself refocused, re energized. Williams Jr. up top now finds Zaglinski down low. Out to Tyshawn Patterson, who's been the star of the fourth quarter. Thought he could do it again there, but just can't connect. Moss cleans it up. How many times have we seen Tyshawn Patterson weave through traffic to get that shot? Jake Anderson looks for another answer. It's cleaned up by Stefan Nastich down low. Big men at home. If you're in high school, if you're in elementary school, if you're in anything, as soon as you see that, that's right there what you have to be doing every single time. When you see that rebound and you're right there, keep those hands up. Finish at the rim, just like Nastich did right there. 
Kirk Williams Jr. now looking to take on Justin Moss back to back. He can't do it. Great defense there by Justin Moss. Five seconds on the shot clock. Zaglinski from the corner for three. Everyone thought Zaglinski was going to go out of bounds there. He regains it. Gives him plenty of time to set up and hit that shot and regain the lead for the Niagara River Lions back up to five. Stop and play here after Justin Moss and Kirk Williams Jr. went down in the paint. Got to clean up that sweat in the fourth quarter. I'm sure their jerseys are soaked at this point. It's going to be Orangeville ball on the baseline. Oh my goodness. And really when you, when you think about you know how many minutes some of these guys have played uh, in the last uh, 48 hours uh, on both sides. We've got some of the better players on this on both sides of these teams playing 30 plus minutes. And then of course, specifically for Niagara, having to make that trip from Windsor in one night all the way over to Orangeville and play the very next day. Uh, you can only imagine that's gotta play a huge factor in this fourth quarter here in a game that's so close. Here's Jamison tipping now. Over to Justin Moss. Moss goes up, can't get it to fall. Mad at himself, actually, that he couldn't connect with that one, but he will go to the charity stripe now for two shots. Absolutely, and Kelsey, you can even say that Justin Moss in this situation is the trump card because I don't think anyone was expecting him to play today uh, from the Niagara River line. So or now from knowing, the A's. and really from the Orange Villets, of course. And when when you see the fact that you know, add in the fact that you've got arguably your best player who didn't play yesterday, who took the, who was able to get the game off, and There's is now not. here fully rested, while everyone else has played at least, you know, everyone on the floor here has played at least 20 minutes last game and has played at least 20 minutes in this game it, it, it adds up and Justin Moss really doing exactly what you would expect him to do in the fourth quarter be the fresher man and being able to finish at the rim and being able to stay physical and that's 22 points for him now Ryan on the night 22 points eight rebounds it's going to stay with Niagara after a little bit of pesky defense I'll say by Alex Johnson down low He's also got eight boards, it's two away from a double-double. Off the pitch. No, not that shot. Sammy Zaglinski. Over to Muldrow from up top. The big man can't connect right off the back rim. Alex Johnson now bringing it up for the Orange Relays. 20 seconds on the shot clock, calls a play. Looking to get this back. They're gonna need a three to tie, and a two will do it for now. There's still nine minutes left to go. That looks like some serious contact oh, face to oh. chest there. Tyshawn Patterson just short. You can see fatigue starting to come in now. It's going to be white ball off of Samuel Muldrow. I want to take another look at that one, Ryan. It did look like there was some body there. Look, his face goes up right to the armpit of Blue of Hall, excuse me. And it, uh, the call has changed now. It's going to be Niagara ball on the baseline after the referees kind of got together and chatted. Said it was actually off Jake Anderson, so it's going to be blue ball on the base. Muldrow now up top, hands it off to Sammy Zaglinski. Turns the corner, finds a wide open Muldrow coming down the middle. It's good for two points. What a fantastic cut there by Muldrow, and unfortunately, Orangeville now lulling themselves back into those bad habits on defense of kind of more specifically watching the ball instead of watching their man, and it was an easy finish for Muldrow. Johnson finds himself open. Way to take the body contact on that one. That foul is going to go to Hall, Carl Hall. As Scoop Jardine and Rich Amarty make their way back onto the floor, Marcus Lewis is going to come out take a quick breather on the bench. The Orange Relays are going to stay with their lineup. Sammy Zaglinski also going to be on the bench for Niagara. Alex Johnson learning from Jake Anderson's mistakes there, cocking it back, giving himself a little bit more time to sell the body check uh, to the referees. Yeah, he kind of paused in mid-air exactly, there to yep. take that third foul for Carl, Carl Hall. Yep, and sometimes that's all it takes because when some of those plays happen so quickly, the referee really doesn't have time to react to it. And, you know, regardless of, of how you look at it, the replay, in live motion, it looks clean. Whereas there, you get a chance to stop, get him a chance to see it, see the contact, and Alex Johnson makes the most of it with two points. Niagara only leading the way now, Ryan, by three points, 98 to 95. With just over eight and a half minutes left to go in this fourth quarter, Alex Johnson really giving Scoot Jardine a run for his money here when it comes to bringing up the ball. Muldrow, a pump fake up top, gets Moss off his feet now over to Jardine. It's just long. Tyshawn Patterson, the smallest guy here, tries to put it back up, but it just rattles out. Tyshawn Patterson, those fresh legs really coming into handy right now. He is everywhere on the floor right now, and it seems like this was uh, all part of uh, the coaching staff's plan here to have Tyshawn Patterson take a seat for the third quarter because he's doing everything right now in the fourth. Nastich, a long two is no good. Scoop Jardine improving his worth here, grabs that rebound, slowing it down now, looking to set something up for his team, gets it over to Hall. 
Hall over tipping. It's good for two. It's looking like guys are starting to get a little heavy out there, Kelsey. The fatigue seems to be setting in just a little bit. Legs are a little bit heavy, flat when the shots are coming off. Guys getting back on defense are not exactly as aware or as aggressive as they would normally be. We'll see if that's going to continue to be a factor here. Now, Ryan Niagara averages only 96 points per game in this league right now. They have hit 100 points still with seven and a half minutes left to go in the fourth. Here's Tipping up top with two seconds left to go. Down it for one, two, three. That was a huge shot from Tipping here. Big three, big, big, big three. 17 points on the night now for the Orangeville native. Still a two-point game as Mildreau looks for the answer from the 45. It's no good. Johnson boards. You can't allow that, Kelsey. You can't have anyone take that many wide-open shots right now this late. And there's a big block. But there's Justin Moss right there in the finish. Don't tell me he's not ready to play. Tie game here. 100-100. It's reset now. Just under seven minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Both teams now sit at 100 as Scoop Jardine place point guard for his team gets it over now to Muldrow. Muldrow skips it over to Patterson. Patterson looks to drive with it off the glass. It's no good, but he gets it right out of the hands of Stefan Nastic over to Amarty. And there's going to be a blocking foul there on Nastic. Amarty will go to the line now for two. A couple substitutions for both teams. Rich Amarty, or uh, Rick Bodiford, excuse me, will come back in for the Orange Relays and for Niagara. Sammy Zaglinski and Chris Commons. Go Tyshawn Look Patterson just doing everything Extra right hustle. now. You know, obviously we're the uh, Orange Relays broadcast, but when you see good hustle and good basketball, you just can't get mad at that. That was an excellent effort by Patterson. Amarty holding his boy parts down low. Looks like he might have gotten a little <laughs> bit in. He's making it quite obvious. You can tell from even from where you're watching at home where he's hurt, but he will go to the line now uh, for two shots. That's right. Amarty, just stretch it out. You're okay. Amarty's got 18 points now on the night, five rebounds. He's three for five from the foul line. Make that three now for six as he's still holding on to his junk. He's got one more shot at the line, just under six and a half minutes left to go. Both teams still sit at 100. You want to know why he missed both of those, Kelsey? He's got something else on his mind. No, no, he didn't dance before. Ah, you're He didn't right. get in rhythm. You're right. Alex Johnson from the three tries to answer that one. No good. A big, long rebound by Chris Commons. That's a tough shot to miss right now. You, you kind of don't want to see that shot being taken so early in the, in the shot clock when you have a tie game and you've been down for most of the second half here. Great defense there by Jake Anderson. Gets the Niagara River Lions out of rhythm. But Scoop Jardine puts it in for a 1-2 tray to take the lead, 103-100. to 100. And That's why right there. Got to have your defense ready. Here's Jake Anderson now, loses it. Gets it into Nastic. Nastic with a little floater, no good. Unfortunately, Nastic. Zaglinski, can he do it? That one, no good. Amarty grabs that offensive rebound, a new shot clock. Amarty gets it up to Zaglinski. Over to Carl Hall now. Hall back out to Zaglinski. 10 seconds on the shot clock, he drives. Kicks it to Jardine, who's been hot so far. That one, no good. That's a good set there by Orangeville. Staying patient, contesting shots. Jake Anderson in rhythm with the answer. It's a tie game now, 103-103. Timeout, Niagara River Lions. And that's a, that, a very good timeout there for Niagara. Let's see in transition here. Johnson finding Anderson, gets his feet set. And once again, it almost looks like the exact same play we saw earlier in the fourth quarter here to keep Orangeville on pace with Niagara. Jake Anderson has been absolutely smoking in this second half. Uh, he's Right now, he's sitting at 19 points, uh, five rebounds, Ryan, four assists. He's having quite the night tonight. He got the start, and he's showing why. Yeah, absolutely, and when you add in the fact that he's a player as talented as he is, uh, on the defensive end. That's a big reason why he is here on this team. But once, uh, also really with, with the injury of Anthony Harris, he's another guy that they're going to be relying on to work the one and the two alongside with Alex Johnson. And you can see in this game, especially in the second half, him and Johnson are really clicking because Johnson is actively looking for him on that wing, looking to see if, if, if uh, Anderson is there and ready for the shot. You see the hands are set and ready to go. And that's really been the time where you've been seeing him make those shots is by catching them. And I know that this kind of seems like the word of the day for us is in rhythm. And it's so important though, because when you, you can notice the difference, when guys are kind of pulling it up or they're trying to bring it back and they're trying to hurry to shuffle and set their feet before they go off of the shot, more times out of 
nine times out of ten, that's not going in. It's the ones where guys are actually setting up the position, setting up the play, getting to their getting to their hot zones, if you will, on the floor. Where they're most comfortable shooting the ball, that's when you start seeing them knock down big threes. Ryan, it's a tie game here with just over five minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. And I mean, statistically wise, these teams match up perfectly. I mean, their numbers are almost the same, except when it comes to foul shooting. The Orange Bill A's are shooting 72% right now. The Niagara River Lions only shooting 50%. And it's second chance points that are keeping Orangeville in it on the other end. They've got 26 points compared to Niagara's only 15. It really, it's, it's, it's interesting to notice here in this game that points in the paint. Carl Hall putting in work right now, especially in the second half, and they've actually overtaken the uh, Orange Villets now up 52-44 in that specific category. Here's Ziglinski gets it into Commons. Commons over to Jardine. Jardine back to Commons now. Back to the basket. Into three people. There's nothing but air there, but there is a late foul call. It could be on any three of those guys, but that one is gonna go to Jamison Tipping. Unfortunately, Kelsey, it's looking like fatigue is now finally starting to kind of have a bit of a factor here when you see that, you know, guys are kind of starting to labor a little bit, be a little bit more physical on there because they know once the ball is kind of passed off to them, the feet are getting a little sluggish on the rotations. And when you're, anytime you're late on rotations, then all you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be hacking arm. You're not gonna be hacking the ball. That's Jamison Tipping's fifth foul, Ryan, so he's only got one more to give. Still four minutes, 47 seconds left to go in the game. Chris Commons is making a living right now from the foul line. He's got four points all from the foul line. 0 for 8 tonight from the field. Not like him as one of the no. best scorers in the league. But again, that, that fatigue that sets in after playing one, two games, especially on the road, as Jamison Tipping goes up for the three. A big offensive rebound there by Jake Anderson. There you go, take advantage. Over to Alex Johnson. Johnson gets it into Nastich now. 16 seconds on the shot clock, Nastich. Oh, yeah. Beautiful drop step there into the middle for the hook shot. I, I love that move there because that's the move Niagara's not expecting. They're expecting the kick out. They're expecting you to move the ball. But if you give Nastich the space like you did right there, he showed exactly why he's playing pro basketball. What a finish at the rim. Here's Chris Commons going up against Jameson Tipping. He's got only one foul to give. He finds Hall underneath. It's good for two points. Chris Commons kind of got away there. Got to kind of shoved Tipping off of balance to give himself just enough open space to make that pass. Very savvy move there by the veteran. Here's Jake Anderson up top now for the Orangeville A's. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Gets it over to Tipping. Tipping finds Johnson. Johnson kicks it out to Rick Bodiford. And once again, Rick Bodiford, we talked about this earlier, Ryan. He is so good at getting those fouls in Especially the corner, in the corner. Oh from the three-pointer. So again, once again, he'll go to the charity strike for three foul shots. Amarty will get hit with his, is it fifth personal foul? I believe so. And you know what, though? Once again, Kelsey, that's, that's savviness. Uh, once again, I, I don't mean to constantly repeat words, but Rick Bodiford right there, full extension, as soon as anything just slightly touches him. And really, to be honest, Richard Marty should know this as a teammate. He's seen him do it time and again. Whenever you go and contest Bodiford on anything on a three-point line in that corner, Bodiford already knows he's not going to really get a chance to get back on defense. So you might as well sell the call. And that right there, I think, is a big reason why Bodiford always gets those calls every single time, because he's not afraid to embellish the contact. Bodiford misses the first two foul shots. He's got one more now at the line. He's sitting just at 13 points, one for four from the foul line. There it is. Timeout called by the Orangeville A's Ryan. Three minutes, 42 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. 107 to 106, Niagara is leading the way. Uh, it's, like I said, back and forth now. The, the, the strategies and, and the buildups that have happened throughout this game are almost completely out of the window. Now at this point, it's gonna come down to who's gonna have the clutch factor to make the open shots, who's gonna have the clutch factor to make sure to go after that loose ball, who's gonna be able to consistently rotate on defense to make sure that you're not giving up any easy shots because that really has been the Achilles heel here for the Orangeville A's uh, specifically, whereas the Niagara River Lions, really more than anything, is they've just been kind of been caught on the back of their heels whenever Orangeville's been going on a run 
here. And both, we'll see which conflicting style is going to work out here offensively. Brian, if you are the head coach right now of the Orangeville A's, what are you saying to your guys to keep them up? This, I mean, this is their third game in three days. These guys must be exhausted at this point. Oh, at this point, you really just have to make sure that you're giving guys an opportunity for open looks. Stefan Nastich, having the, having the guts to make certain decisions. If you're going to make a decision, make it with full conviction. Know that this is exactly what I want to do with the basketball right now. Don't don't hesitate. Don't think around and go, oh, maybe this is a good idea. Maybe this isn't. But if you see the option there, like for, and I, I'm going to go back to Nastich because that was the last time we've seen a guy make a full decision in, in quite a few sets up and down the floor where he said, no, I've got the space. I know I can take this guy. Let me put the body in. Let me finish at the rim. They need to see more decision making like that. It doesn't have to be in the isolation game either. It can be off of the passes. It could be, I know I'm going to find that guy in the corner when I kick and drive. Just more decisive that's the number one thing that I would preach if I was Zoski on the offensive end. Defensively, they need to make sure at this point, just keep your feet under you. Make sure you're staying in front of your guy. Make sure you're using your peripheral vision. When you see those cuts, when you see that blur of blue in the corner of your eye, you gotta make sure you're going and you're constantly touching them. You're constantly feeling them, making sure you know exactly where they are on the floor. Otherwise, you're gonna get burned on offensive boards, and this is not the time for that to happen. Well said, Ryan. Speaking of that, there's just an unfortunate error if you're a Niagara River Lions fan. Sammy Zaglinski just steps out of line. And again, I use this word so much when it comes to Alex Johnson's defense. Pesky, just pesky defense from one end to the other, just 96 feet of the entire floor. He's both Superman and Kryptonite. <laughs> Here's Jake Anderson. Looks to find Nastich down low. Rick Bodiford eventually comes up with it. Gets it over to Justin Moss. A big block by Carl Hall, but there's going to be a foul called there. That's that decisiveness I was just talking about there, Kelsey. This one goes to number 31, Kirk oh, Williams Jr. Only his second right now, Ryan, of the game, so nothing really to worry about if you're uh, the head coach right now of the Niagara River Lions, but Moss will go to the line now for one more. I got to love Kirk Williams Jr. Once again, this is why I call him the instigator, because he's making sure, he's dictating the narrative here, letting, letting the referee know, no, 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 that's my foul, that's my foul, because he knows exactly how many fouls he has to give in this game, and he knows how many his teammates have to give, and it's just, it's such an important thing. But also, going back to Justin Moss here, as he misses his first free throw, a rare miss there, I think that's his first miss of the game so far. Um, just keeping in mind that decisiveness that we were just talking about. He needs to make sure that he's staying decisive throughout this game and, and the off offensive decisions that he's making. Moss now, 25 points, 10 boards, having employed the night for himself after being injured just yesterday. And he's still at halftime. You heard him say, you know, his foot's a little bit sore, but he's continuing on because his team needs him here. Just under three and a half minutes left to go in the game. Here's Zaglinski, finds a wide open haul, but the pesky defense continues for the Orangeville A's as Rick Bodiford able to swipe it away. Another foul on Justin Moss. He will go to the line one more time. This late in the game, Kelsey, on a foul. Fast break every time. You've got to give it to Moss. You have to give it to Moss. He is the most consistent finisher at the rim on this team. Hands down, there is no debate about it. And on top of that, to top it all off, he's also turned himself into arguably the best free throw shooter on this team as well. There you go, give him 26 points now on the night. He's seven, or he's eight for 10 now from the foul line. He's got one more. Something as well that we don't really, we haven't really talked about in this broadcast, Kelsey, is you forget how big he is because everything about him is very perf is very well proportionated. You don't really see the ridiculously long arms. They or saw whatever, me but. standing beside him there yeah. at halftime. I'm five nine. I'm wearing heels. I'm a big girl. He like is huge. Yes. He's just six, huge. Six eight two forty. Like <laughs> he's a hard man to move. Bonifer with another steal. Back to back steals for the veteran Orangeville A as he goes up. Misses, but Alex Johnson tries to clean it up. Great defense by Bonifer. Marcus Lewis on the other end. Great finds rotation. Chris Commons. Great rotation. Out to Marcus Lewis. Just short. And another rebound by the Orangeville A's. They're leading the way right now by two points as Jake Anderson goes up and under to bring the lead to four. What a decision there. Recognize that the one guy was trailing off to make sure Justin Moss wasn't going to get another quick layup. Anderson decisive. Very decisive there. Decides. I'm going to go right to the rim and finish because I know I can. And he gets rewarded by, by finishing with two there. And this transition here on the replay. It's Anderson, you could see, as uh, I believe that was uh, Marcus Lewis that was kind of holding back, waiting to see Justin Moss. But you no can sale. see Kirk William Jr. is not happy there. You've got a quick look at that one. 
really a big captain for this team, getting angry at his teammates, saying, how is Rick Modifer getting this many steals? steals? How are we letting them get this lead on us? A 111 to 107 as we move over to the Orangeville A's bench. Coach, very calm as they draw something up for this last two minutes and 40 seconds of the game. Yeah, really, and you know, it's interesting, though, because you just kind of look at it, and you even just see the way that Rick Bodiford is kind of playing right now. You can just see it in his eyes. He's, like, he's, he's basically kind of talking to himself, going, I'm not going to let us lose another game like this. Because he really did take that personally, that loss yesterday against Halifax, feeling that he didn't do enough to get his team over the hump. And today, he's making up for it in a big, big way. Rick Bodiford now sitting at 14 points, five rebounds. Ahead of him, Jameson Tipping, seven points, three rebounds. Leading the way right now is Justin Mosso with 27 points and 10 rebounds. Jake Anderson has really stepped it up, 21 points, and leading the way still for the Niagara River Lions is Richard Marty with 18. Two minutes, 36 seconds left to go in this game. You can see the Lady A's getting the crowd going here to Cotton Eye Joe. Everyone, a quick applause for these dancers, but it is uh, time to get back to it. It is. It's game time. It's game time. It's fourth quarter action time. That's what it is. The fans, I can see them all on the edge of their seat right now. This is a game that you get your money's worth for sure this family day. That is definitely the crowds out here in full force. They're loud, both sides. It's always fun to have some away fans in here as well. It gets the home crowd a little bit more riled up. Of course, of course. Here's Marcus Lewis now for Niagara, being guarded closely by Jake Anderson, comes off a screen. Lewis almost got away with one there, throwing the shoulder. Williams now up top, over to Zaglinski. They get it into Hall, who's been dominant down low so far in this game. Nastich is gonna get called with that foul. That's his fifth of the game. Unfortunately, that's a tough call to make though. I mean, it, it did kind of look like he, Got some hand there, but to be honest, I thought that was a clean block. Here's now Carl Lewis or Carl Hill, excuse me. He's got 17 points right now, one for two from the line. He nails this one, brings his team up to 108. He's still got another chance at the line. If he makes this one, it's Scoop Jardine who's going to come in for the Niagara River Lions. It's a big miss there for Niagara. Jake Anderson once again kicks it out to Bodiford. Over to Alex Johnson now. He's going to take it out point guard style. I Set like something this. up for his team. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Bodiford drives baseline. Able to put it off the glass as he falls to the floor. His teammates are trusting him to make the right decision with the basketball. And what a great finish there by Bodiford. Hall on the other end. Bodying Justin Moss in for two points. Yeah, no, that was an easy basket for Carl Hall. He uh, managed to managed to catch Justin Moss, who unfortunately was inside. We take a look here at Rick Bodiford making the right decision, going up over three defenders. I mean, what a finish that was, Kelsey. Right now, it's, the shot is set back to 154. Ryan, we're in the last two minutes of the bas basketball game here. So what's going to happen after every single basket, the, the shot, or sorry, the clock is going to stop. So it's not like that for the whole rest of the game. So after every basket, the shot, the clock, excuse me, will stop. Each team will have a chance to put their substitutions in, take a timeout, whatever they want to do. So it did end at 152. The referee put two more points back on. There's a foul there on Scoot Jardine as Alex Johnson tried to get free, but now he's good to go with 17 seconds on the shot clock in the next bucket or stoppage of play Sammy Zaglinski will come back onto the floor for the River Lions. Here's Moss now with his almost finish there turns his shoulder a little bit too much and there's a almost steal there by Alex Johnson as Jardine tries to clean it up. Oh what a what a, that was Three huge. Missed bunnies there by Niagara River Lions. Here's Anderson now on the other end, 120 left to go as Rick Bonifer gets it over to Johnson. They're going to take as much time as they can in every possession here. They're leading by three. Eight seconds now on the shot clock. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't force up any unnecessary shots. Oh, there's the find. Johnson, yeah, oh my he goodness. was going to be open. Finds himself absolutely wide open. As again, it's kind of like a parting of the Red Seas there down the middle of the paint. He gets that two to drop. Let's take a look at this again. Alex Johnson just put Kirk Williams on ice skates, and there he went down. Alex Johnson, Superman. Kirk Williams Jr. has almost pulled a groin there as he does the splits with the, the spin move up top. I have to give Kirk Williams Jr. full credit there to keep his cool after kind of giving up a shot like that. It's 
That's a guy who prides himself on defense. Hall puts it in for two. It's now a three-point game once again, 115 to 112. The clock didn't stop there, so the referee is going to have to come back and put a few more seconds onto the clock. Still, 115-112. The Orange Real A's lead the way, and it's going to be their ball on the baseline. Chris Commons. Taking a shot at our, our table here. <laughs> we see you, Chris Commons. Hey, it's a tough game. 49 seconds left to go in the game. 115-112 is Orangeville ball. Emotions are high right now. Alex Superman Johnson brings it up for this home team. 17 seconds on the shot clock over to Bodiford. Bodiford comes off a screen from Nastich. Gets it into the big man. The big man goes up and it's good for two. Stefan Nastich. Nasty, getting physical. Chris Great Thomas, job. Yeah, Chris Commons tried to take that charge there. It looked like he was either a little bit too late, it wasn't hard enough, or his feet were in the paint, or in the semicircle, excuse me, but Hall with the easy answer on the other end. And you know what, full credit to Niagara right now. They are delivering buckets when they need them most. And there's Bad the defense. There. Niagara gets up now, 116. Orange Villiers call a timeout with 14.5 on the clock. That was a big, big turnover for the Orange Villiers. That's that's very costly there, the importance of just making sure guys are focused. If you see two guys, are, and once again as well, you got to look at your teammates up here. If you see that there's two guys coming cutting down here, someone come in down the middle for some help it instead went, of trying to force yeah, the pass. It went from a three-point lead, Ryan, with their possession with, with, with 15 seconds left to go. And you know, that would have made the Niagara River Lions have to get a three. Well, it would have had to get the Orange Relays to, or the Niagara River Lions to hit a three to tie it up. And now they just need one easy two-point bucket to lead the way. Only 15.5 left to go on the game clock. Ryan, this one is exciting. Uh, very much so. you got to believe that, you know, Coach Lazowski, once again, the importance of getting your guys up and taking care of the basketball. This is going to be another inbound, and don't be shocked here. Of course, there's going to be a full court press here to try and get that bucket. And really, as a coach, what you just want to see more than anything is guys creating open open spaces for each other to get that, that ball in. Because once that ball gets in and you can find it somewhere in the middle, that press is broken. And possibly even a quick basket, if they can find it, just to increase this lead and give themselves a bit of a cushion before Niagara might possibly have their uh, their final uh, their final possession. The Orange Relays definitely want that three or four point lead going into uh, Niagara's last possession here with 15.5 on the clock. That makes it less easy, excuse me, to take the lead. I mean, right now, they get a layup, they win the game. And it's true, it's true. And, and don't be surprised if you see a foul right off the inbound. That's almost, I'm almost guaranteeing it. There's gonna be a foul off the inbound and they're gonna see, they're, they're, they're gonna hope that they can get the ball to either you know, either Bodiford or even Nastich for a free throw. Bodiford's only two for six right now from the line. If I'm Niagara, I actually want to foul him, Absolutely, not having yeah. quite the night that he usually has right yep. now from the line. I don't want to get the ball to Justin Moss um, or Anderson up top. Justin Moss now grabs the ball. And it's stolen! And Johnson with the foul. And it looks like Justin Moss, there was just no, no one around. As he got swarmed, four shirts over him. And here we go, taking a look at that. Clear foul. With 9.4 now on the clock, it is 117 to 116, and Orangeville is only leading by one point. Plus, it's Niagara ball on the sideline, Ryan. Yes, it is. I mean, once again, we're talking about the swarming there. Uh, with the, I'm speechless right now for a specific reason. That they did the right thing by getting the ball to Justin Moss. He is their best free throw shooter. What they didn't necessarily do so great is letting each other know as we're good looking at the replay here. There's Moss and Look there's at him. He's got four, three, he's got shirts. three guys. He's got four guys now around now him four, as Kirk yep. Williams Jr. steals that ball for him. And I think Justin Moss didn't pass it out thinking that the referees were gonna call the foul that I'm assuming Niagara was trying to get. I mean, 
few foul with 14 seconds left. It's better, of course, for Kirk Williams Jr. to grab that steal instead, but I'm pretty sure they went there with the idea that they were gonna foul, stop the clock, put Justin Moss at the line, hope he misses the foul shots, come back, hit a three, but now even better if you're a Niagara River Lions fan, 9.4 on the clock, and it is your ball, only down by one. I would even go as far to say that they, he purposely said as soon as whoever gets the ball, just swarm them but don't foul. If you swarm them and you don't foul, at some point, he might be able to cough it up, and then once you see a certain amount of time run off, then you foul but There's no way that the head coach of Niagara drew up four people swarm one person, because Justin Moss throws that out. Anybody has an open layup, he just didn't have a chance to throw it out, because I think he really thought there was going to be a foul call there. Again, guys, everyone at home, I'm hoping you're on the edge of your seat. Everyone here at Athletic Institute is on their feet for the last 9.4 seconds. The Orange Relays have to play the best defense that they possibly can here as Scoop Jardine gets fouled. Still no bonus, though, so it's going to stop the clock at 6.6. .6. Niagara ball again on the sideline. Here we go. They still have to play defense. 4.5 now on the clock. Still not a shooting foul. The next one will bring the team to bonus as Nastich, Nastich comes on for the Orangeville A's. There's a timeout called for Niagara. Ryan, that was actually a great gameplay there by the Orange Villiers. They took off five seconds so far. So, I mean, Niagara has five less seconds to score the two points that they need to win the game. That's a very good point, Kelsey. You can bring up the fact that a lot of people could be at home going, why are we fouling, why are we fouling? We only have a one-point lead. You just explained it perfectly there. It's, it's meant to cut literally the time in half there. It's literally in half now at 4.5. And this gives uh, Niagara many fewer options, let's put it that way, to try and put the ball in the hoop. And they're only going to get a chance at one shot now. We're opposed to, they may have had a chance for a quick tip in or something like that, or even getting a rebound, turnaround jumper or something of that nature. Now they don't have time to do that. So once again, kudos to Coach Brandon Lazowski there to let his guys know, let's get the foul. We have enough timeouts now to ice a shooter. And whoever it is that's going to take that shot now knows that he has no room for error. And you know what? It's the same goes for the defense. They have no room for error, Ryan. Even a foul at this point puts Niagara at the line, and if they make two, you lose the game. Exactly, and I think at this point, fatigue is not going to be a factor. Everyone's full of adrenaline at this point. Everyone knows what they need to do. Trust me, these guys could run 100 miles right now. They're so jacked up and ready to go in these final 4.5 seconds that it's really just going to come down to who's going to be more disciplined, and once again, who's going to be the team that's going to make the fewest amount of mistakes in these final four seconds. It's an imperfect game we play, Kelsey. An imperfect game. Anybody who came out to Athlete Institute or watched yesterday or watched today is definitely getting their money's worth here <laughs> in Orangeville. These last two games for the Orangeville A's have been absolute nail biters. And it's going to be Niagara Ball now in front of their bench with 4.5 left to go in the game. They get it to Sammy Zaglinski over to Richard Hardy. He turns around. The buzzer is good to take the lead. minute. That is not a three. That is clearly a two-pointer. That is clearly a two-pointer as we're looking at the replay here. As we've got a clear look here at this replay to let people know that that was a two-point shot. Got the uh, shot up properly now at 118, 117. And even though you're not seeing it on the broadcast right now, it is 118, 117. 118, 117, shot goes up, no good. And Niagara, Richard Amarty, a successful return this time to the Athlete Institute as he's the one who puts the dagger in the heart of the Orangeville fans and his former teammates, Kelsey. If you are Richard Amarty right now, that is a beautiful homecoming for the Amarty party as he goes and high fives his old coach from last year. 
at the end of the game. It's 118 to 117. The Orangeville A's now. The Orangeville A's now fall one like, last time. Look at this one. Amarty turns around right in front of his yeah. old teammate Bodiford. Sinks in with only 0.4 left to go in the game. And Amarty is feeling it right now. If there's an all-star of this game, Ryan, it is clearly Rich Amarty, who played for the Orange Relays last year, had a homecoming here with his new team, Niagara, ends the game with 20 points and six rebounds. And I mean, once again, you look at the ability and the, you look at what he, like how comfortable he was in taking that shot. Absolutely effortless finish. And once again, a very, very impressive outing there by the Niagara River Lions and the Orange Villets. Once again, a very impressive outing in their own right, but just coming up short one more time. All right, guys, at the end of this one, 118 to 117, Niagara River Lions are on a two game winning streak. Now the Orange Villets on a. They're now Orange Villets on a five game losing streak. Okay, guys, check out some highlights. We'll have an uh, interview with the player of the game right after that. game today a nail biter at the end of this one you guys dropped it now 118 to 117 after a buzzer beater by Rich Marty who played here last year what's the feeling ending this game what are you guys going to talk about in the locker room uh, how much this game really stings you know losing three games in a row something that you nobody wants to do but we have to find a way to get over this hump you though came out for one of your first starts with this Orange Relays team you ended with 28 and 4 how do you feel despite the loss I don't feel great you know, loss is a loss I'd rather have zero points and then with a victory, then 28 and such and such with a loss. It's a good team player. My last question, I'm going to let you go with your teammates because I know you don't really want to be here right now. You guys have Niagara again next week here at home. It's your next home game. What are we going to expect to see out of you guys? Um, same effort. We just got to find a way to execute more offensively and defensively. And I think um, at, by the end of the game, we won't find ourselves in this predicament.